Yay! Happy War and Christmas, everyone. Welcome to the Transatlantic Call-In Show, the show where you can call in and you can tell real trans people that you are an idiot to their face, and it will be incredible. Um, this week, you can talk to me, Mrs. Father Christmas. No, wait, that's misgendering. Um, Mrs. Christmas. And you can also <laughs> talk to Dr. Saucepan. How are you, Dr. <laughs> Saucepan? Um, uh, I took my last exam of medical school, and so I just have to participate until, until the end of April. So, and I will officially be Dr. Saucepan. <laughs> Uh, at, at the end of April. I think you should change your name. Like, trans people change the name all the time. You should just change your name again to be Dr. Ben Saucepan. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll get the paperwork started. If someone wants to give me the $400 to change my name again, I'll, uh, I'll make it happen. $400? Yeah. In the UK, you can literally just do it for free. You just, you can write, I, I went on Word, right? And I just copied and pasted something off the internet that said, I did name, I'm now called Katie Montgomery. Two of my friends just signed it. Done. That was it. That's how you change your no, name. No, I had I had to get like a notary signature. I had to get fingerprints done. I had to pay like court fees. <laughs> like it was ridiculous. And my state Mate, had what, you want... better rules about it than other states do. Like other states will make you actually have a court hearing about it. Mine didn't make you show up for the hearing they just signed the papers but wow isn't that weird well that's because every country is slightly different and every every country has a different state of like how good trans laws are and some places are garbage and some places are less garbage and they're more moving around a lot of stuff is happening in the trans rights world at the moment and you might notice i have a scottish flag behind me and there's a reason for that, and it's because Scotland, which is not the country I live in, but is part of the country I live in, um, just passed today after six years and like so much campaigning. We've been fighting for this for so long. Scotland just passed their Gender Recognition Act reform, uh, which is amazing. Absolute shout out to all the Scottish people in the chat. Like, good job. Scotland is the best country in the UK. Uh, absolute winners. So congratulations to Scotland. But I don't just have a Scottish flag behind me. I also have a Spanish flag behind me because not only did Scotland pass their Gender Recognition Act reform today, Spain's done it too. Or Spain, I'm not quite sure what the stage of the process is. Spain has like lined up to pass it. But they did a vote today and something good has happened today, which means that they're basically committing to doing a Gender Recognition Act reform equivalent. Um, which is really exciting. Like it's the same kind of law. It's happened on the same day. Today has been a good day for trans rights campaigning in Europe. Um, the the Scottish one has quite a lot of the things we want in there. There was like 150 attempted amendments, um, which is where they try and like water down the bill and make it worse and stuff. And basically all the important ones failed, which is great. So it's pretty much what we wanted, um, including 16 year olds being allowed to get a gender recognition certificate, which is amazing. But the Spanish one lets 12 year olds do it with uh, a judge's consent and 14 year olds do it with a parent's consent and 16 year olds do it without. So like Spain has won up Scotland on the same day that Scotland won ups England. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's good progress. Everyone should be happy. I'm happy. I'm two drinks in. It's Christmas time. I'm dressed as a Christmas. Like, it's a good time. You're just as ben, a, are you Christmas. Having a good time. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a good what? time too. Um, I'm not dressed as a Christmas. I'm dressed <laughs> as a some random trans man on the internet. So there Katie's you go. enough drinks in that she only notices the changes to Dr. Ben's name tag. <laughs> and not her own. Fuck you, Jimmy. <laughs> The best the producer that this show has ever had. Um, but, um, wait, I was going to have a sip of drink first. Now I'm going to do it quietly. Ben, tell us a thing. You didn't have to make it about ever have. <laughs> David David was a great producer. I'm just saying. David was in the top three producers this show has ever had. <laughs> That's right. Um, <laughs> Ryan I love as you, well. David. Wonderful. Ryan, a great, great producer, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan was great. 
Um, but yeah, we've had great producers. We've got a whole great team here. We've got some great cool screeners. We've got great people. We also have Ben. It's going to be a good show. We've got full <laughs> lines, but we, you know, if you call just as someone's hanging up, we might be able to get another caller in. Um, we're going to have some, we've got some spicy callers lined up. We've got some other callers lined up. It's going to be great. Um, but first, we're going to talk about the polls. So we ask a poll every week. And we asked a question last week, which I've totally forgotten what it is, but we'll go back to find out in a minute. And we like to have you vote on them. So last week, Ben, would you like to read it out and give your opinion on this amazing poll? I can. Anti-trans groups seem to have copied the anti-abortion lobby in their legal strategy. Lots of small, unlikely lawsuits. They may have lost this time, but it worked for the anti-abortionists over decades. Do you think it will work for anti-trans people? And 19% said yes. 24% said maybe, 45% said depends on politics, and 12% said no. Um, I don't quite know what this was referring to. I have to admit, I've been under a rock for the past month while I've okay. been waiting to find out residency results. So I remember when I wrote it or when I was putting it on the channel that depends on politics was, I felt, the most ridiculous choice to offer people. <laughs> And I feel totally vindicated. I So for the record, I don't choose the polls. Katie writes most of the polls. I just copy and paste them to the channel for anybody who's wondering. And I just remember, depends on politics being like, well, isn't that just 100% of people should click depends on politics? Because that means so many things. Well, I'll tell you what was going on through my head. Because Ben missed out and Jimmy thinks my answers are too vague. And obviously 45% of people also thought the same thing. So. As a summary, sorry for the people who watched the show last week, but you're the best people in the chat, so you get that bonus. But I'm going to recap. Basically, um, a while ago, in like 2010, uh, the UK passed some law which said that trans women can use women's spaces, trans women are women, blah, 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 blah. And it was pretty good. Uh, it's called the Equality Act. And um, a gender critical group called Four Women Scotland um, basically took the Scottish government to court over a law that they were trying to build on that. So the Scottish government was like, we're going to have it so a minimum of 35% of um, public boards are going to be women. So if you want, you know, some uh, government group or whatever to be something, it needs at least 35% women. And the four women Scott were like, but that can't include trans women. And they sued the government and originally oh. they lost and then they appealed it and then they won. And suddenly that was a quite a big deal because that was out of line with all of the other laws that we had. And it made it seem like, oh, well, trans women and women, like even if they get a gender recognition certificate, blah, 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 apart from when it like is a public board in Scotland. And so that was a big win for the gender critical movement because it meant that they had kind of made a crack in the law where they could then try and okay. build upon and try and drag this open and make it bigger. So that's where I was going for these small lawsuits. But recently, mm. so in response to that, the Scottish government was like, okay, then we're going to change the law. 35% of boards have to be cis women or trans women. So then four women in Scotland like, sued them again. They kind of appealed their own win in order to like try and clamp down and like, take some more ground. And like a higher court, basically a more important judge said, oh, the original ruling was garbage. So that got thrown out. So they, they spent their own money to accidentally undo their own win. Um, but not only did it do that, but the main anti-trans group in the UK is Sex Matters, I think, maybe, probably one of the main ones. And their big push at the moment is to get the government to uh, clarify the Equality Act. And this ruling kind of did that. So they kind of shot themselves in the foot and shot their mates in the foot, which was pretty hilarious. But the reason I was going for this poll is like... Um, you know, the anti-abortionists just did this for decades mm -hmm. and, and eventually it won yeah. them some ground. And do we think that that's going to work? And what I meant by depends on politics was, is this only going to work when we have a right wing government? Basically, which is probably what I should have said instead of depends on politics. But I don't know, Ben, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, I, I am going to be honest. I don't quite uh, understand how government works in, in the UK and on that side of things. Um, it seems like it's it's a decent strategy for them if they can uh, make people just slowly move over to their side and then all of a sudden something big happens and you don't realize how you got there. I think that's, I mean, that's happening with the U.S. with this issue. And 
uh, especially just with conservative politics in general in the U.S., this has been happening where we'll we'll concede one specific point and they'll get a, an edge in and then they'll just keep going and going. And then suddenly now we're here and uh, Roe v. Wade has been like overturned. And it's like, OK, well, how did we get here? Well, it was these little things that added up to that bigger things. I, I think it's exactly. a worthwhile strategy for them. What like as as long as they don't shoot themselves in the foot, like like you were saying, um, but I, it seems like maybe they are starting to shoot themselves in the foot more often. And I don't know if that's necessarily a like a strategy failure in itself or if it's just they didn't quite plan out that strategy as well as it, it would have been. I'm, I'm glad that it's it's failed them a couple of times, um, but may, maybe they're getting lazy about it and thinking that they had so much success initially and then now they're expecting that easy win so they get lazy with it and now now they they lose so i don't know we'll see how so, it how it goes i think the you're, you're almost right because i've been thinking about this a lot actually in the last week and i think rather than lazy i think you pretty much nailed it rather than lazy they got arrogant because mm -hmm. I think that the strategy of loads of small lawsuits, I, I mean, probably shouldn't say this because, or not that my word really carries anything, they're going to listen to me anyway, but like, I think it probably is a good strategy. And I think there's a reason why it's worked for the anti-abortionists and there's a reason why that it's possibly going to even work for the homophobes um, who might be able to get some of the states to put in gay marriage bans and they might be able to, it, it's still, I know that Biden just passed that law, but it's still complicated, but um, I do think that that works, but the issue is that um, I think the anti-abortionists, and this is pretty crazy to say, stayed more grounded, or at least are more grounded in the year 2022 than the gender critical movement are. And none of the anti-abortionists were like, for example, already arguing that abortion was illegal. Like that, that wouldn't be something that they know what the law is. They know what they need to mm. say to try and push it over the edge. Um, but that is what the gender criticals are arguing. And in this court case that they managed to lose and overturn their own win with, their lawyer effectively argued that the Gender Recognition Act in the UK had already been repealed. Like, literally just tried that argument in court. And the judge was like, uh, no. And it, the reason is, is because they're so... Like, their little propaganda, they're like, oh, you know, they, they, they always say defending women's rights. They never say attacking trans people's rights obviously because that makes sense because it's easier to sell to the public but the thing is they aren't defending anything because trans women already have the right to use women's spaces in the uk um but they they said their own propaganda so much and believed it so much that they've like created this alternate universe where you know trans women are already banned from the toilets and they're we're asking for something new and it's like a big change to society because that sells better. But the thing is, when you try that in court, it just doesn't work because the judge is going to be like, that's not what the law says. And I think that was their downfall. So I think you were right. I think that um, the strategy might be good, but they kind of fucked it up. Mm -hmm. So we might see a return to it. I think they'll need they'll need some serious regrouping after the last two weeks because they've, they've lost pretty bad. Not only did four women in Scotland um, accidentally gain some trans rights at their own expense and overturn a previous win. Not only did they lose the Gender Recognition Act uh, vote, but also one of them flashed Parliament. Like, literally, she got oh, the genitals out. I saw that. Out. I saw that. <laughs> it's funny, because, like, the thing that, that they often like to blame trans women for doing, which they don't, like, the, oh, well, you're just going to go into the bathroom and show off your genitals to everybody. Like we're not doing that you're the one going into a, a government establishment in a very formal situation and then doing that like okay yeah. with children in the room and also she wasn't wearing underwear so it was obviously premeditated so um well i say that i mean i assume some people don't wear underwear under dress but like you know i feel like she planned it and um yeah so i mean four women in scotland have done a lot of damage to the gender critical movement in the last two weeks and i applaud them for that <laughs> but anyway let's move on to the next poll i hope everyone in chat knows what i meant by depends on politics i don't know but this week i i've been i don't want to make you read them out but i feel like i've done most of the talking like do you want to read it out or should i do you it just want to hear my my sexy deep voice on stream yeah <laughs> 
Scotland Scottish just passed accent. it. Oh, <laughs> my Scott! I would get <laughs> I would get murdered in the chat for I I I can do a really <laughs> stereotypical bad one. Uh, you know, maybe maybe later on, maybe later on I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Scotland just passed its gender recognition reform bill, giving more trans people equality. This took six years of hard work by Scottish trans people and their allies. What do you think? W, I hate equality. I just hate Scotland. <laughs> Those are your <laughs> options. Choose wisely. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess I wrote this with space for us to rant about it, but, like, I've kind of already ranted about it. But I, maybe I could tell people what exactly it does. But so, like, the gender recognition... I feel like this is, like, proper, like, over-the-top detail. But basically, in the UK, you're, you can already change your name whenever you want. You can change your driving license. You can change your passport. You can change your bank details. You can change pretty much everything just whenever. Um, but what you can't do is change your birth certificate. And in order to change your birth certificate... Uh, sorry, if, if you change your birth certificate, that allows you to um, get the correct marriage certificate, the correct death certificate, um, allows you to do some tax stuff, allows you to, when you apply for things overseas, there's a few corner cases, but nothing, nothing like the major importance, like using sp public spaces and having a passport. Um, but it is important to some people, and it's important to everyone at least once in their life when they die. Um, and yeah. the gender recognition, you need this gender recognition thing in order to get one of these certificates. And basically in order to get one, it was like borderline impossible, which is completely ridiculous. Had to jump for a load of ho hoops. Um, and uh, only 1% of trans people in the UK had one. <clears throat> and now they've passed a new law, which will mean 75% of trans people in the UK get one. So, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting Scotland, thing. So. Because I... Um... Obviously, I'm in the U.S., but like in thinking about getting certain documents changed, and I I just got my passport updated to to say male, which is fantastic. Uh, I have to wait for my other documents because through the military, I have to change it through the military. Um, but with regard to birth certificates, I I kind of laughed at this for a little bit because I was like, why would I need to change my birth certificate? That seems very silly. Like, who's going to look at it? But actually, um. My next rotation in med school is with the the VA, the Veterans Administration, and they actually, like for their security clearance, require you to send them your birth certificate, which is ridiculous. I was like, this is very invasive. Um, and I talked to my school. I was like, hey, um, like this is going to out me as being trans to to all these people. And I'm not super cool with it. Uh, I ended up just dealing with it. And sending them all the all the documents just because i i don't care enough to change my rotation but i told them i was like hey um if you're gonna make people send these documents like you should because this was an optional rotation like you should warn them ahead of time and say hey this rotation is going to ask for these documents if you're not comfortable with sending that we can pick a different option for you and like yeah. so there are times when the when the birth certificate does matter and so having access to changing these documents is impactful and does uh, impact some somebody's life and how they go about their business. So, um, props to Scotland oh, yeah, for, for, sure. for helping people actually, you know, achieve some normalcy being a trans person. <laughs> and Spain, um, and Spain. But yeah, I think the reason I got a gender recognition certificate, like I, I, I'd be up for getting married one day. Like, I am feminist, and I do understand that marriage is, like, originally just trading women like property. But at the same time, I want a big party where I can blackmail all my friends into coming. But, <laughs> and and I, I do care about my friends and family having to deal with me being misgendered when I die. But also, I'll be dead, so I don't care that much. But my main, my main drive to get it <clears throat> was, what if I need to move to another country? Especially what happens if... I'll go, we get an even further right government and I have to flee the country. I might need to apply for citizenship or something. They're going to want my birth certificate then. And mm. I don't want to have to out myself. So, yeah, for sure. It, it is, it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, it doesn't affect your life at all until it does. And then all of a sudden it's like quite a big deal. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, well done, Scotland. Well done, Spain. Well done, the 18 other countries that have already passed it. 
and several US states, the rest of the world fucking get a move on, especially England <laughs> and especially whatever state Ben lives in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, this is a call in show, but this is also, I think, like 33% reading out Super Chats show. If you would like mm -hmm. to send, send a Super Chat, um, if you would like to do a hashtag team Christmas for me, <laughs> or a hashtag team, what were you dressed humbug. as? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not dressed you, as any Christmas. So, <laughs> if you want to destroy Christmas and you are the person who Tucker Carlson talks about every week, vote for Ben. Yes, hashtag team anti Christmas. Team War on Here Christmas. we go. <laughs> um, then. Then we'll we'll get some things on. So me and Ben are aware, like last week, if you watched Arden Moore Potato Sack for the whole show, because she lost against me and I was the queen. Next time me and Ben are on, hopefully I would have finally got my doctor slash nurse costume and Ben will come as a metal head. But mm -hmm. for the one after that, we'll think of a new punishment. And Ben was just thinking, like maybe I don't yeah. know quite how it's gonna work, but maybe if we get twenty five votes total, me and Ben will have a we dry Weetabix eating competition where we have like mm -hmm. one minute to eat as many dry Weetabix as we can or something like that. And, and maybe the winner will get a advantage or they're allowed to have one sip of drink or something. I, I don't think Americans know what Weetabix is. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not everyone knows what Weetabix is. Um, so it's a brick. It's an English it's a, thing. It's a brick it's like, of... <laughs> it's, it's a wheat yeah. based breakfast cereal, but it's like I, this thing that you, you have. So imagine a frosted milk. shredded mini wheat, but, but take giant. the frosting <laughs> off and then make it ginormous. That's a yeah. So and, and basically when, when you bite into it, it like sucks all the moisture out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, so Katie eats them dry. And I found these in the US. And so I figure it's a great punishment because I don't like dry food, but Katie uh, only eats dry food. So <laughs> I will try to eat them dry as many as I can, and I'll try to see if I can eat more than Katie. Yeah, that's the if challenge. you get 25 votes overall, that's, that's the challenge. If you would like to, please don't feel any pressure. It is Christmas. People spend a lot of money this year, um, especially this time of year. Just, you know, live within your means. But if you want to harass me and Ben, then this is the time to do it. Last time of the year, basically, I think. Probably the last show of the year. I don't know. We might do another one. We'll have to discuss it. Yeah. Wait, why wouldn't we do another one? There's one next When's week. the next one? It's the Thursday. 29th. There's nothing. Oh yeah, that's on the my family 29th. Christmas day. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not around for them. Maybe I'll do bank and do one. I'm so, here. Some people are doing I'm one. Here. We're we're okay. doing it on Christmas. Also, just so you know, we're doing a Christmas episode of of the Sunday. Is show. it? Mm -hmm. Oh well, everyone should definitely watch that. That'd be amazing. Yeah. The all Sunday host... show is the second best show on this on this channel. All actually, it's probably already skept talk to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that shows that shows doing crazy numbers. Uh, anyway, yeah, all hosts of the of the Sunday of the line will be welcome to the Christmas episode. So feel free to stop in on Christmas if you like. All right, I might come say hello. It's only um, an anyway. hour later than this show starts. Only yeah, an yeah, hour later no problems. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Anyway, this is a call-in show. This is a call-in show for trans people. We have people in the line who have been waiting. Our first caller has been waiting for 40 minutes already. He's super keen. He is everyone's favorite caller. He called in last week and we didn't have time for him. Let's talk to Wes, who is any pronouns you like from London. Wes, I think you want to talk about the GRA reform. Go for it. Yes, I'm sorry we couldn't take you last week. Yes, well, no problem at all. I know that the, the question I posed was um, um, a little bit um, controversial for you guys to take so I'll, you know it's not a problem I'll, I'll, I'll excuse that but first of all I'd just like to say season greetings to you both and, um, Thank you, and a you. shout out and a shout out to Jimmy can Jimmy stop shadow banning me from the forum because I am not an abusive person I don't you know I try to be very respectful of everybody and whenever I call in there's always a lot of um, feedback and I'm never able to answer it and if people do ask questions or, or want me to point things out or to correct things or, or, or just basically just to um, make things clearer, I like the, you know, the opportunity to have a right to respond. So 
That's right, Wes, to me. Wes, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it off, but if they ban you again, because it wasn't me, you did something that one of the moderators would have warned you about before banning. But if they All ban right. you again, you're toast. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, thanks for <laughs> removing that anyway. And, and just, just one other thing before anyway. I start my main topic, just, just okay. very briefly, very briefly. You know when you had your survey there and you was equating anti-trans, or, okay, you might call them anti-trans, I will probably call them women's rights. Are you trying to say they're actually in favour of abortion? Or oh, sorry, they're anti-abortionists, is that what you're trying to say? Or I'll just a little bit Oh, confused. no, no, so, no. <laughs> so the, argument, the argument that I was making there is that... Um, Gender critical the same groups tactics. are following the same strategies as the, the anti-abortionists, but I'm not okay. just that, saying cool. it's the same strategies. Cool. Yeah, I'm saying that that's, you that's know cool. they 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 work together in some ways, but they're not inherently anti-abortion. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's fine. Wes, was your, America uh, is, 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 hey, real quick, Wes, 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 different kettle of fish. So as long yeah. as we just cleared that up. Wes, real quick, anyway, was your was your username Wes Slaver in the uh, on YouTube? Because that's I'm trying to find you in the block list. Right. Okay. Um, no, no, no. Um, I need yeah, to got... answer the question. <laughs> I, the I'm... only Wes I have in here is named Wes Slaver. S L A V E R. Is that you? Oh, Wes Dag. It should be Whiskey Echo Sierra Delta Alpha Golf. Wes Dag. I don't That's have you in line. here. I'll keep looking, but I don't have you in here. I'll look. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I could probably send you an email later on, and we can just clear that up if All that's right. okay. Thanks, Wes. Sounds great. Okay, cool. Anyway, Wes, yeah, you're anyway. on the line. You want to talk about the new yeah. law? Go for it. That's right. Yeah, it's just been a lot of um, mischaracterizations on your part there, Katie. I must say, um, because first of all, it's probably going to get challenged. Um, first of all, by the the, the UK government first of all, and if that doesn't work, it's probably going to end up in the Supreme Court as well. So just bear that in mind, first of all. Um, also, you were talking about the, the case where the four women in Scotland took the Scottish government to court and they lost their appeal or, or they lost the judgment which they had previously won. Well, what they were looking to do, they were just trying to find out what does the general recognition certificate do? What does it actually cover? And until they went to the, the highest court in Scotland, which is the court of session, nobody knew exactly what the what the um the purposes of the general recognition recognition I certificate did. could do. And the Scottish government basically said, if you have a G GRC, that basically means you are a woman for the purposes of these public boards. So that's what the Scottish government was arguing. Now for the purposes of this gender reform, the Scottish government is now arguing something completely different. They're saying if you have a GRC, that doesn't mean you are not able to access women-only spaces, sports, and everything else. So they're saying one thing to the court of session, saying women or anybody who has a GRC is a woman. You know, they're, they're exactly the, you know they're a woman. There's no questions are. And now when they're trying to get this gender. Um, recognition um, reform part, they're saying, oh, no, the, 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 the single sex exemption still apply. So that's the reason why it's been very confusing um, getting this legislation right. through, because the Scottish government's saying two <laughs> different things. You see what I mean? I think I can clear this and, up. Um, I can clear this up, Wes. Hang on. Let's, let's deal with this first point first. So, yeah, sorry, on. Ben, this is quite like uh, UK specific. Um, so this might you might not know all the details here. But um, I thought it was interesting how, as you were saying, that no one quite knows what the Gender Recognition Act does. And uh, I think that's very unique to the gender critical side. Uh, I think we're quite intimately aware of what it does. Like I had to apply for one of these things, so I know why, what, what is required and what it does. Um, but the, the arguments being made here is um, the original law that the Scottish government wanted to do was 35% of all public boards need to be women, a minimum or men, but obviously that's not an issue. Um, and for Women Scotland was like, well, that can't include trans women. And the Scottish government was like, well, actually that does include trans women because anyone with a gender recognition certificate um, counts as a woman or man legally in all cases within the rules of the Equality Act, which is true. And that's what they argued and that's what they won in court. So that means for the cases of public boards and everything else, trans women just, with a gender recognition certificate just count in any situation however you then raised this point about the single sex exemptions 
So basically, there is um, a part in the Equality Act 2010 in the UK, which says, um, basically, trans it says anyone who is transitioning or proposing to undergo transition, basically, it gets the rights of the, the sex that they're transitioning to. Apart from, there is this exemption which says, in a case-by-case -case basis, where you can justify it, um, you can exclude individual trans people from the situation. And what this is meant for is this is meant for things like where you have a women's shelter and you have someone, say I came, like I came out, I don't know how many years ago, seven or eight years ago or whatever. Obviously now, if I was in a situation where I had to use a women's shelter, which I hope I never have to, um, it would be ridiculous to say, oh, well, you're banned from the women's shelter because there's, there's no rational argument for that. But if it was the day that I came out and I tried to use the women's shelter or the day before I came out or around that time, then I think there would be a good argument to say, hey, look, we understand you need this service, but you, it's this particular service is not appropriate for you. So we're going to signpost you to another one. And any shelter that does that needs to be legally protected to do that. So this little part in the Equality Act says, basically, if you can come up, if you can lay out a good reason on a case-by-case -case basis, then you can exclude some trans people in certain circumstances. That could never be a blanket exclusion like trans women don't count for your 35%. Like, it, you could argue on an individual basis, you could say, look, right, you're trying to have 35% women, and, you know, maybe there's 10 people on this board, and... Two of them are cis women and two of them are trans women, but one of them only came out yesterday and hasn't started transitioning, doesn't face structural oppression for being a woman yet. You know, this, we just don't think this should count. You should also have another woman on the board. Then you could make that argument still today, regardless of whether she has a gender recognition certificate or not. But if the fair, uh, Four Women Scotland original ruling has stood, then that would mean that if you had a board that was, um, you know, like five men and five uh, women, but three of them were trans women the same as me, then suddenly that wouldn't count. And it would count as just eight men, which would obviously be ridiculous. So that's, I, I don't know if, if that's communicated your answer to you, but I, I feel like this is quite clear to me. And I feel like this is quite clear to the trans community and I feel like it's very not clear to the gender criticals because they kind of don't want to understand on purpose. Um, well, I think that judgment, um, because as I said, the, the Scottish government is basically saying one thing to the court when the, um, you know, the court of session, basically saying that if you have a gender recognition certificate, you are a woman and you can do anything what a woman can do. And, when they try to pass within the rules of the equality, they're saying something completely different. But it's not That's completely the, different. They're that, saying that, they're saying it sticks to the Equality Act, mate. That basically what they're saying is you count as a woman in all situations, apart from there is this one exception on a case by case basis, where if you come up with a good legal reason, then you can exclude someone temporarily. That's 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 the law. That's been the case but for the, 12 years now. But the bottom line is, the, but the bottom line is, there's, there needs to be a lot more clarity. And I think, funnily it enough, I think this, um, I think, I think... What this, what specific clarity what do you got, want? Well, could just what is not clear? I think, <laughs> you just said you're not an expert on UK law. And now you're trying, you're trying to ask... I'm not, I'm not. That's why I'm, ask, that's why I'm but asking. That's why I'm asking you. You are demanding. You understand you are, my... You I understand what Katie said, and, and so you come in and you say that it's not clear to me, and I, I demand more clarity. On what? What clarity do you demand? A lot of businesses, organizations, and so on and so forth, they don't know what their legal position is. So that's what I'm saying, because if they... If okay, they, so is that, the have, fault, is have... that the fault of the, of the law, or is that a fault of maybe we can communicate things better? Well, that's the reason why you have lawyers. That's the reason why you have a judicial review. That's the reason why people go to court, just to find out exactly what the what laws are supposed to do, what they actually cover. And that's the reason yeah, why... Yeah, and the I judicial process is working. Ago. Sorry? The judicial process is, is working. Right? Well, it isn't working because... It's, an, it's working right now. 
it isn't working because you're having situations now where people are not following through with the single sex exemptions because they're confused about what the what a gen, what, um, the GRC actually does. Where's the single? So in, this single. So this the, the issue here is Act. the issue here is the your your personal issue and the issue of the gender critical movement is that you've kind of got your own like. No, view of the world. I'm trying to be as. Now. I'm trying to be as good. To speak for me. Hang on, I'm Wes. I'm speaking in terms of what the law is actually saying and the confusion yeah, in yeah, the law. Yeah, and but it's not me who keeps losing the court. You're trying to attribute the sounds to me, which I haven't. I haven't right, explained. No, yeah, I am attributing to the sounds to you. And what I'm saying is, part. hang on, Wes. Let me say my part, and then you can decide whether I'm strawmanning you or not. What I'm saying is. The issue with the gender critical movement as a whole, and I think that you do personally fall into this, is you guys have a view of how the law works, and we have a view of how the law works, and they're obviously different. That's okay, but every time it goes That's to court, that's why you have courts and you, judicial reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But exactly. every time it goes to court, we end up with a situation where it isn't kind of close. Like the the gender critical people arguing this in court, like get annihilated in court. I know that Four Women Scotland won this one ruling, but like a while, like I don't know, four years ago, um, AEA and Synot's original organisation did a judicial review arguing that all trans women should be banned from all women's spaces using the single sex exemption, and the judge was like, "This is ridiculous." He he said, "This is an obvious absurdity," and it was thrown out. In the last Four Women Scotland ruling, they argued that the Gender Recognition Act had already been repealed. And the judge was like, this is total nonsense. Um, they were talking the issue about is, that in reference to... The issue to is that your the, worldview... They, they, they mentioned in that your probably worldview, in where's, reference hang on, to hang on, hang on. marriage. That's where's, probably in relation to same-sex marriage, which is basically super... Where's, hang on. In your worldview, the problem is, in, in the gender-critical worldview, they believe that as the world sits today, trans women, as a rule, aren't allowed in women's spaces. But maybe there's some exceptions who dance through a load of hoops and stuff. But that isn't, not only is that not the actual reality of the situation, that's also not the law. But the reality is that trans women have always been used in women's spaces. But the law is, since 2010, that trans women are protected to use women's spaces. But in a case by case exception, rarely, by the way, which has never once been used in court in the 12 years this has been law. In the case by case exception, you are legally protected if you decide to exclude one trans woman. And that's when you say single sex exemption, that is what it means. That that is the name of this little piece, the the like gender critical talking point refers to this thing where and where you can ban just one trans woman if there's a good reason. Um and the reason why I'm confident in saying this is true. And it isn't just a differing of worldviews, is because this has been litigated in court multiple times, including those two cases that I just said. But in other cases too, there's a few others. There, there was a Land Rover case. There was there were some others. And every time this comes up, whenever a gender critical person brings it to court, they always come with this angle of, "Oh, well, all trans women are already banned," and the judge is always like, "That isn't the law." Like that is just a hundred percent of the times. That has happened. So that is why I am giving this position. And that's why I feel like I'm attributing to this. It, that's why I feel like me attributing this position to you is fair. Do you disagree? I don't. Hello. 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 You're back. Are you still there? Yeah, we are still here. We're Can here. you hear us? Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think the, the problem is as well. Is that um, one thing the Scottish government has done? I think, uh, sadly for you guys, is that they have basically tried to use this whole self ID um, issue as a wedge issue with the UK government to try to show that the SNP and Nicola Sturgeon is very progressive in embracing this issue. But what they could have done on how the, the bill has been presented now. There was an amendment. You said that, oh, yeah, all the amendments got um, got rejected and so forth. But there was a particular amendment which has caused alarm to a lot of people throughout the UK. Um, and that amendment, you know it very well, Katie, it basically would prevent a convicted rapist of obtaining a gender recognition certificate. And the, the Scottish government rejected that. Now, 
there's always this stigma attached to transgender people that they're all predators, um, they're just men who are just trying to get into women's spaces, using ulterior motives and so forth. Now, why would the government say, well, you know, predatory men wouldn't try to do this? Why would they then have the opportunity to enshrine that in law by refusing a rapist to obtain a gender recognition certificate? Why would they reject that? What sort of right. message and does that send yeah. out? Yeah, because so what well, my point that, is, yeah, you know, really Wes, trained, I hear you. Let me let me address but, it. I, I, I hear you, I hear you, Wes. I think I think that your first question of why have they done this is, is fair. And I think your second question of what message does this send is maybe more important. But the first part, why have they done this? So in the gender critical world and in maybe the mainstream media, people hear gender recognition certificate and they think basically there is a man and then you get the certificate and then you're a woman and that's what the transition is. And suddenly you're allowed to use women's spaces. But that's just not how the law works um trans people the transition obviously transition takes years and years but there are so many different legal steps to it as well for example you can already change your passport you can already change your driving license you can already change your bank details etc as i was talking about earlier on this show um all of that is unrelated to the gender recognition certificate and using women's spaces including shelters um etc is not dependent on a gender recognition certificate. I only got my gender recognition certificate this year. And I, I mean, people who've been watching the show for a year will know that, I mean, it's kind of ridiculous that I had to wait this long to get this piece of paper. Um, but if I wanted to compete in women's sports, if I ended up going to prison for like tax fraud or something, which I haven't committed, <laughs> if I, um, you know, went, had to use a women's shelter, if I wanted to use a women's toilet, None of that is dependent on the gender on the gender recognition certificate. So that when we say, "Oh, do we really want a rapist to have one of these things?" people always think, "Oh, well, that means women's spaces. That means women's sports. That means women's prisons." And it doesn't. What it means is, this person who could well be a bit convicted rapist is allowed to uh, get married with and get a correct marriage certificate. When they die, the death certificate will refer to them correctly. Um, if they want to do tax stuff, their tax stuff will match their thing. If they want to apply for a student course overseas, their name will be correctly registered, etc. Now we can argue, we can say, should a convicted rapist be allowed to get married? We can have that as a separate argument. But the thing is, convicted rapists to assist people, they're allowed to get married. Convicted rapists to assist people, their uh, death certificate will correctly say their name. Convicted rapists who are cis people, they're allowed to apply for student courses overseas. Like, those things are things that cis people can do. We can say, I, oh, well, maybe, just, you know, but the, hang on, no. let me just finish. But, okay, hang on, okay. hang on. <laughs> the thing is that when we say, oh, we're allowing a rapist to get a gender recognition certificate, what we should be hearing is, we are allowing a rapist who is a horrible person, and I do not want to... I don't want them to get out of jail quicker. I don't want them to be subjecting on to society. I don't want them to be causing issues. I don't want them to be related to me in any any way at all because they're horrible, disgusting people. However, I think that all people should have some basic human rights. For example, no one should be tortured. We shouldn't torture rapists, even though I fucking hate them and sometimes I might feel like that's what I want to do. But also, they should be allowed to have the correct documentation to reflect when they get married or die. And I don't think that's actually controversial. I don't think, oh, do you know, in Scotland, rapists are allowed to have a correct marriage certificate. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, I guess. I, doesn't, I just don't think that's a big deal. Why do you think that's a big deal? <clears throat> yeah, because I, to be honest, Katie, um... I think that law which they passed, and it is basically um, allowed a rapist to get a GRC, that has just basically conflated this whole trans women are predators narrative, because they the, the government could have easily just accepted that amendment, because who are you gonna who are you gonna disadvantage? You're just gonna be disadvantaging sex offenders and rapists. Now, all well, of a sudden, that I can is answer linked that question. To trans women, you see what I mean? I can answer that question. Headline. I and that's a yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I totally agree that due to the media, it's this could conflated. send a bad message to people. 
But the the thing is here, all I can do is argue for what I think is morally correct, and the media is going to do its own thing. But what's interesting here is you said, who does this uh, like hold back? It like just affects rapists. But the amendment was actually anyone who has a um, who's on the sex register, basically. And that can include yeah, you're a sex offender. all kinds of people. It can include people who are doing sex work. Like there's been a situation before where um, a teenager has sent sexy photos to their like partner who is, uh, so like a 17 year old sends sexy photos to an 18 year old and then that can get them on the sex register. There is a range of things that get you on the sex register. And that's why this amendment was pushed back because if you, if you're a 16 year old girl and you have an 18 year old boyfriend, like, we can argue about the morals of that, but that does exist, and that's quite a common situation. And if you send him sexy photos, and then he gets a sex register thing, and he's then banned from ever transitioning and having, um, I hear you. You know, the, the correct depth to get. I, that's the yeah, issue. I, I hear you, but but what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to say is, if you're trying to sugarcoat this bill, the best thing to do would have been to just say, okay, no sex offenders can get a GRC. But all I would say is this, Katie. This has still got a long way to run until we can perfectly establish exactly what self ID means and what allows a person with a certificate to do, what spaces are able to, uh, they're able to access and so forth. We're going to have this to and fro, and I think it's going to end up in the Supreme Court and UK government might step in anyway. So anyway, I'll bid you farewell because I know there's probably more people wanting to call, more probably more Thanks, interested than me. Um, have a nice Christmas and, and Ben as well. Yeah, thanks, Wes. And um, like, I think this has been our best call. So thanks a lot, Wes. I, yeah, because you know, I, have a good I, Christmas. I, I, I always get mischaracterised. You know, I don't hate anybody. And I always see all the comments and I just really just get to, gets me upset because I don't dislike anybody. Oh, I'm sorry, I just Wes. Don't, like, I just don't, don't read like, the comments. I just don't like bad actors. I have just a don't good like Christmas. bad actors and people acting in bad faith. That's what I dislike. And okay. I just think sometimes oh. it just gives people an opportunity, and that's the only points I ever try to make. I don't dislike anybody. I don't hate anybody. Cool. If I saw you out the street, I'll t I'll have a drink with you. So this idea Wicked. that I just want people, you, drink, you know, please. genocided and all this sort of nonsense, I just, just find that abhorrent <laughs> personally. So, okay. So anyway, that's cool. my See piece. You and, uh, Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye. All right, all the best. <laughs> Oh, well, I, that I was, was quiet for cool. most of that because yeah. I just I don't have a lot to say about uh, the UK and what goes it's, on there with with your I must laws. Say, but Wes, if you watch this back or if you're still listening, my main criticism of your cause is that often very UK specific, which often leaves our American hosts in a situation where they can't answer. So the next well, call I'm going to let I... Ben take. I was just going to say, like, I, what I gathered as an American listening to that call was that, um, like the we're not being clear enough and so the way that we get through that is with the judicial system uh which the ju judicial system disagrees with wes but so i don't know i'm confused <laughs> like if, they, if they're the arbiter if they're the arbiter of what's correct then and you're gonna raise them on this pedestal of well yeah what they say is is what goes and then they disagree with you well sorry you just kind of debunked yourself there bud <laughs> <laughs> so the reason the reason why this is the gender critical position at the moment is because the Scottish government is uh, rational, but the English government is far right and completely ridiculous. And so the English government has been saying all kinds of threats like, we're going to block the king from signing this law. In I said king rather than queen then, I got it right. We're going to block the king from signing this law into, into action or whatever it is. We're going to try and use the UK's government powers to block Scotland. It's not going to happen. Like I, I'm sure they're all grabbing onto those straws, but it's not going to happen. But that's the reason why they're saying it is because we've kind of got two arbiters and they can they kind of hate each other. So mm. uh, anyway, let's move on. Let's talk to who's been waiting one whole hour on the queue. Thank you very much, Daniel from Texas, who wants to talk about how to deal with anti-trans talking points. And I want to hear what you've got to say, and then I'm going to hand you straight over to Ben. So Daniel, go for <laughs> I it. I appreciate it. Could you just give me a moment, please? Yep, you have one full right, moment. Um, ben, are you ready to talk like you've never talked before? Uh, I will try. I'm not as uh, ranty sometimes as Katie. Well, it depends on what people get me <laughs> ranty about. This one, since I've been on this topic for like 12 hours now, I think I might be a bit more fired up about this. 
because I've had just nonstop anti-trans talking points in my Twitter feed since like last night. So um, uh, if, if a moment is only a few seconds longer, then we'll do that. But otherwise, we can come back to Daniel. Sorry, I Daniel, wanted to make sure my there? parents can't hear me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I wanted to make sure my parents couldn't hear me. So yeah. No, I understand. What's what's Daniel. going on? Okay. okay. Um, so basically I've, I've heard a lot of the same kind of talking points from people like, uh, you know, that damned Matt Walsh. (laughs) Oh yeah. Um, and I just want to know how to respond to them and like what the truth behind their claims are. So yeah. What kind of specific talking points, uh, would you like to go over? Cause I mean, we could probably be here for a year just talking about every bad talking point that they have. But are there any particular Almost ones definitely. that... Yeah. Um, what you got? One of the, the big ones is uh, that transgender people's gender identity is caused by sexual abuse in early on in childhood. Is, is that true? It, well, it's not true. Uh, it's... It's true that some people, that some trans people, and maybe a higher percentage of trans people have experienced some kind of abuse in their childhood. But the problem is what we're doing here, it's essentially a, uh, a correlation causation problem um, because you have no evidence to say that this is the cause of why somebody's trans. We also have plenty of examples of people who are trans that have never experienced um, that kind of abuse. Like I'm, I'm one of them. I'm trans. I've never experienced that. I'm very thankful that I've never experienced that. Um, So just the fact that that people exist uh, who have not experienced that um, shows that that is not uh, sufficient to cause someone to be trans. Like Even if there was a correlation, even if you could demonstrate, hey, this is a variable that contributes um, to the environmental factors that, that would predispose somebody to be trans, even if that were true. Um, it is not sufficient in itself to be the only variable to cause somebody to be trans. Um, so I think the way the I would, why. at least that's the way I would approach that discussion is um, that you can't you can't necessarily prove causation. And I, I probably would, I, Katie might have a totally different approach to that. Um, I would I would make them make them try to prove it in a conversation. Yeah, what do you think, Katie? that's actually. Go ahead, Daniel. No, it's fine. You, you go ahead and, and say what you wanted to say, real quick. Um. Yeah, I guess my point. So Ben's totally right that there's no like the problem with that claim is there's no evidence for it. But I'd also point out not only is there no evidence for it, but they said the same thing about gay people. Sorry. Like, f- the, they said the same thing about gay people for like um you know, 50 years or something, or 100 years. The claim when I was growing up is that the reason why someone was gay was because they were sexually assaulted as a child. And you hear that still today. And when they're just saying exactly the same thing about trans people, it's like, oh, maybe you just say this about everyone you don't like. Maybe you just say this about all LGBT people. So not only do they have no real argument for their claim, there's also a lot of suspicious background to the claim that that they're making. So I, I would guess I would ask myself that too. Yeah, I totally agree. The reason why I brought up this argument is because I actually heard this exact argument from the person I was talking with. And I basically did the exact same thing that Ben suggested. And I agree with your points, Katie, that these are really similar arguments to um, against gay people. I'm, I'm gay myself. Um, and this guy basically appealed to, oh, we have countless studies that show that this is the cause of transgender identity. And he showed me one study. And funny enough, that exact study actually later went on to say that uh, this, I I think it was, it said that half, like it's a a one out of two transgender people experienced sexual abuse during youth. Um, yeah. And it later went on to say that this isn't enough to demonstrate a causation, exactly what Ben said. Um, right. And so I pointed that, Daniel, out, that part out of the, Daniel, part of the study. My out number, and it was like, Daniel, my number one tip, this is, this is not just for you, this is for everyone watching. My number one tip for when an anti-trans person 
argues with you and they provide a study is just read it because mm -hmm. literally and i i have done this i have done this so much so i i i, I have argued with anti-trans people every day of my life for six years nine times out of ten the study says literally the opposite of their claim and and that is not an exaggeration and you're right you read this study and it says there's no evidence for causation there you go now the study they provided you backs up your point yeah i i learned that trick from forrest by the way so he, he did that one nice. time and i found it absolutely hilarious it's so every time it's so satisfying <laughs> i know but yeah, sorry, go on. Feeling of the world. Um, I, I was curious about what you think about that. Um, that one out of two uh, percent. I, I think that's what it was. Let me see if I can go ahead and check real quick. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's it sixty percent actually. The the stat that oh, I wow. usually use is sixty percent of trans people have been sexually assaulted. Ben, do you yeah, have a take? The, the, so, yeah. Well, the the thing here is like you can pull uh, yeah. a number. That, that says a majority of a certain group of people X or Y. But the problem is, um, with all of these variables playing in, you then also have to prove that one led to the other and that one wasn't the cause, like it wasn't in reverse. Uh, for example, like it, could they demonstrate that uh, the person wasn't assaulted because of their being trans or because of something? Like how do you determine which variable was the cause of whatever happened. Um, if you just say this happened and also this is related, you don't know the chronology of the timeline of, of when that happened. Um, you don't know the other variables involved. So how did you get from point A to point C uh, without, without going through the middle and ironing out really what happened uh, in each of these cases? So it's like um, there's a lot of examples in, in medicine like this and this is actually one that we've run into with a lot of um like anti-vax uh, propaganda and covid denialism uh is that people will say well uh this person got a they got a blood clot uh and uh like they they died of the blood clot but then the blood clot was caused by covid and they're saying that well no but it wasn't it was the other thing so yeah, um, we have that relationship with, with COVID and blood clots. We also have that supposed relationship from them with, with uh, the COVID vaccine and, and blood clots. And they haven't been able to say, well, what happened in what order and what caused what? Because it's possible um, that uh, one thing caused a blood clot or maybe a blood clot caused something else. And this is where it gets really sticky and it's very hard to put into words simply because it kind of messes with your brain a little bit to try to think of exactly what caused what to happen. So I, I think that's the, the biggest problem uh, with that. I know that was a lot of word salad and I hope it kind of made sense. No, no I, I, it made sense <laughs> to me at least, but I think, I think that you're, you're um, addressing like the, the logical you're addressing this from a logical side. And basically when you have something yes. and something else and they happen and they correlate, everyone knows correlation doesn't mean causation. So that is the first point. And that is a logical argument that you can always make and it is true. But also we have more evidence that gay people are more likely to be sexually assaulted than straight people. Women are a lot more likely to be sexually assaulted than men. Does this mean that being gay or being a woman is like some mental illness caused by sexual assault? No, it doesn't. That's completely ridiculous. And we know that from all of the things we've already said, how, you know, women and gay people exist who haven't been sexually assaulted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we also know how all LGBT people, you know, trans people and gay people are more likely to be um, kicked out of their homes. They're more likely to be unsupported by family. They're more likely to be desperately seeking um, people who support them, um, desperately seeking validation for who they are. And like, I know validation is kind of like a dirty word sometimes when you're arguing about trans rights, but humans do need it. They need to be treated as a person. And if your family aren't treating you as a person and your work or your school or whatever aren't, and then you meet some man online and he is treating you just how, you know, he's treating you like a, another person, just like a human, then that's, that's, 
that's where real groomers come in. You know, these people who target children who don't have a, a strong support network. And the reality is that LGBT people, all of us, you know, gay people, trans people, everyone has a higher chance of having an unsupportive family. That means that they have a higher chance of being vulnerable and a higher chance of being sexually assaulted. And there are studies that show this, you know, we, we can find studies that show this causation more than just a correlation. Um, and I think that, you know, this is the same thing as before where we can say, well, this is the same argument they made about gay people, but there's a reason that, you know, these groups, um, marginalized groups are always the ones who are most likely to be sexually assaulted and it's all of them and it's not just women it's not just trans people it's not just gay people it's also other minority groups like travelers autistic people you know disabled people they're more likely to be sexually assaulted too and you get to the point where you start saying well i don't think being disabled is caused by you know being sexually assaulted it's just completely nonsense so perhaps there are other forces at play but yeah, I don't know. How, how do you feel about that, Daniel? Yeah, I definitely agree. That's essentially what I was planning to respond to him with. <clears throat> oh, I'm really sorry. I, I muted here? you by accident instead of me. <laughs> Start again. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> sorry if I had too many drinks. Say again. You were planning to respond with that. Yeah, I. that's something along the lines of what I said a bit shorter. <laughs> um, but he, he basically just said, no, my studies, like... I, he he well, didn't so, really have much to say other than my study. Read them. So. Yeah, so, so that studies. person is not wanting to have a, an honest conversation. If if they gave you the studies which did not support their point at all, in fact, the studies <laughs> contradicted their point, and then you give valid logic that says, hey, your argument doesn't really stand, and then they just turn around and say, but look at the studies, which, again, going back to the circle of, those studies that disproved you. This is something that I, I see a lot, and especially in my, my recent uh, dog pile on Twitter. People have just been going in that same circle where I will debunk their point. And they'll just bring, the, bring up the same exact point again as if I never debunked it. And it's, it's very frustrating to have those conversations, and I get it. But Cough, that's wise. a conversation where you, you might not be able to, to win because they don't accept your rules of the game anymore. They don't accept... Uh, that they've been proven wrong, and and it's it's difficult. Um, and that might be a case where you just need to walk away from the discussion because at that point they're not they're not willing to engage. So it it sucks. But am I muted, Katie? No, you're not. Sorry, muted. you're here. <laughs> there's a one off. There's right, a one off. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's that's basically what happened. Um, the problem then was I couldn't research the studies that he gave because he only gave me that one. And then he just appealed to more studies without ever saying what they were. Yeah. So, so demand, demand the studies. Go say, that point. Yeah. Dem demand them. If they do that, um, demand them, send you the study or at least give you the, the title and the authors of the study. And, and then if off, odds are they can't, uh, but if in the off chance that they do give you a whole list of references, uh, you can look them up, and they'll probably also say that that they're uh, incorrect. So, I mean, and it, you can it's find easy your own for them studies to throw too. Out stuff. Like, yeah, there are st there are studies that say you know vaccines cause autism, and there are studies that say like you know the the Earth is four thousand year old, four thousand years old. Those studies exist, and they're either not peer reviewed or they're fucking garbage. But the thing is, there are so many other studies like thousands of studies that say vaccines have no correlation with autism and that the world isn't 4,000 years old and it's the same with this like maybe there is one study that comes to the conclusion that being LGBT is caused by sexual assault and then you can look at the study and you'd be like oh well, the sample size is four and the person they didn't have a control and the person running it literally works for a hate group and then oh look the 16 studies that show otherwise there is I mean, there's almost certainly studies that do actually address this topic and debunk it because, you know, this is an old LGBT, anti-LGBT talking point. Um, and I guess my first position on that, my first thing to do on this would be go into Google Scholar and type in LGBT sexual assault or something or LGBT sexual assault oh, causes yeah. and, and see what comes up. And maybe your friend has a study and it says in the abstract, 
LGBT is caused by sexual assault. And then you can be like, oh, I found a meta review of 416 studies, which says there's no correlation. Um, then who, you know, who's more important? Well, well, the one that's, you know, in nature and reviewed by all of the experts and is a meta review compared to one shitty study by like, I, ha I hate gays.com or something, you know. Right, it, and people's, the, people's quoting of, of statistics is usually terrible because oftentimes uh, you'll see people right. quoting well this this experimental group had a, a majority of x compared to the control group and they just compared like the raw percentages or the raw averages like okay where's your p value uh where's your r value for doing a, a correlation like how did you determine that these were actually causal you can't just compare the averages and say, well, this one's better than this one, because you didn't actually do the stats. Um, so you see a lot of statistical error in these groups, too. So definitely, like, if you see a study, not only read the study, but, like, look at the stats. And because there's the one um, by Emma Hilton, we we're talking about Emma Hilton, like, a, a while ago. But she is notorious for taking graphs out of context and you look through her, her papers, and there's no p-value represented at all. It's just raw averages and percentages. Like, you don't even have stats here. Um, so in it's interesting to, to look through their actual results uh, section. And this is, this is really difficult, because if you're someone who doesn't have, like, a degree in statistics, or, you know, you're not a doctor or whatever, um, when you see a study that says 20% of whatever, I mean, you'll just be like, oh, well, this is what the data shows. But like Ben says, I mean, Daniel, I don't know what your, you know, what your knowledge is. Do you know what a p-value is? Lots of people don't. I don't fully understand what a p-value is. I'm not a scientist. I'm an engineer. So when Ben's like, oh, the p-value on this is fucking garbage. Emma takes this out and only uses averages. I'm like, Okay, and the reason for this is, this is why we have experts and scientists. Like, if it comes to, you know, like, blood clots or something, I could Google blood clots and I could come up with some study that says 10% of whatever. But the thing is, I don't know what I'm talking about. And when I show it to Ben, he might be like, mate, the p-value on this? Garbage. And that's because Ben just knows more about blood clots than I do. Um... And it's the same with lots of things. You know, this is how, um, like, this This is kind of how experts work. And we end up with this kind of position where you can be arguing with someone else. And maybe it will just come down to they trust one person they consider an expert. And you trust someone else you consider an expert. And that's why you've kind of got to weigh these people off against each other. And, like, where has this study come from? Who is this? Who is saying this? Which major organizations subscribe to this? And like you see this all the time with the claim that like being trans is a mental illness. Like there there are plenty of people who say that, and some of them are doctors, some of them are experts in something. But the World Health Organization says it isn't. The NHS says it isn't. Like the APA says it isn't. Like these are bigger, more important organizations, and for sure they can be wrong. And this is an appeal to expertise. This isn't a direct understanding for me on some of these issues, but. You, you've got to kind of climb up the ladder. If you understand the study, first, first read the study. Number one, read the study. It probably disagrees with what they're claiming. Number two is, is the study garbage? Are there counter studies? And then number three is, if you've both got counter studies and you don't understand what the flaw in their study is and they don't understand what the flaw in your study is, then what are the experts saying? And, you know, you can kind of move up this ladder of, like, um, who's got... The science behind them and maybe you even then get to the point where like organization a is a major like maybe the american health organization says this and the canadian one says this then maybe it's undecided but i think nine times out of ten when a transphobe sends you something it disagrees with them and then of the remaining one nine times out of ten it's some crackpot and you'll be able to find a hundred studies that say the opposite and then out of that one out of one out of ten Nine times out of ten, you'll just end up in a situation where theirs is by some hate group and yours isn't. And, well, that, and that's and suddenly something like else one here. in one thousand arguments. And something else here. For yeah. someone, if you're debating somebody who claims to be an expert or claims to understand 
uh, the scientific foundation of whatever topic it is. Um, feel free to like make them explain to you conceptually what they believe is going on because that can clarify whether or not they actually do understand the issue because anyone can walk in a room and say, yeah, I understand the science of biological sex. Uh, but if you, ex if you ask them, hey, explain to me how this happens, uh, oftentimes they will not explain to you step by step how a gamete is formed and what variables are involved in that process, which I can, I can sit here all day describe to you the process of how sexual development occurs. And hopefully it would make sense to why my argument is the way that it is. You ask them to explain and they'll just say, yeah, well, I just understand. Or I just, I took this class and therefore I understand. Okay. But what do you understand? They're usually, about? Very, they're usually very easy to out because they'll be like, uh, yeah. biology. And you're like, yeah, but what about biology? Yeah. And they'd be like, uh, you think women are men. Uh, and you're like, well, that is an argument. That is even relevant. And they're like, Pedophile, and then they block you. And it's like, well, there you go. Mm. You have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> like, yeah. me and Ben are coming, yeah. coming out with this stuff of like, oh, yeah, you know, what you're in this situation where you've got two competing expert bodies. That is like one in a million. 99% of these arguments is some shithead who's like, the science says, and then they send you a link and you look it up and it says the opposite. Like, that is the majority of the time. And then this situation where you're talking to your friend and they're like, sexual assault causes trans people. You can just be like, oh, no, it doesn't. Here you go. Here's a study from X. Here's a study from Y. Here's a study from Z. Your own study says otherwise. You're an idiot. Like, that's the main, that's the main thing. I don't know. Daniel, I, I, would, I feel like we could both talk about this forever. Do you have anything else you would like to say in the closing thought? And then we're probably going to have to let you go. Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, sorry to the call screener. I was whispering, and it was probably really hard to understand me. I was half expecting my name to be displayed as flannel on the screen, so sorry <laughs> again to the call screener. I, I apologize. Thank you for your time and patience. Um, well, I'd flannel, like to call again in the future, in. maybe. Absolutely. Definitely, definitely call back. You're always welcome. Mm -hmm, yeah. And if you're down as flannel, then All we'll right, know thanks. who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on. I'll be there on Sunday, definitely. I I can't believe you guys are doing a a, a Christmas edition Sunday stream. Very exciting. Wicked. I'm going to try and tune in. I'm going to try and tune in because my like family we're having our Christmas day on the 29th due to family things. So yeah, I, I might be there. So we'll see. Anyway, flannel. Thanks for calling in. We will talk to you again. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Right, okay, I think the next call is going to be good, and we're going to power on straight into it. Though, just remember, I'm if ready. you would like to send a super chat of $5 or more, we will read it out at the end. But also we are become about a channel member and a patron. To... Also become a channel member and a patron. <laughs> also, Jimmy is the best producer. Also, we're going to talk to, next, Kyle in, Kyle in Indiana. You are on the line, and you would like to talk about how just believing people isn't scientific, oh man, isn't scientific, and we need falsifiable claims. Go for it. Kyle, are you there? I don't think you hit talk. Are you feeling warm and bubbly? I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and move that into the host room. There I you go. I did click talk. Hi, Kyle. Kyle. Hello, That's, Kyle. That was hi. Kyle. Kyle, you on the line. That's okay. What would you like to say? Hi, Katie, Ben. Um... Yeah, the screener did a pretty good job of, of my question. Um, the host of the show over the time that I've been watching it, a lot of the times fall back and say it's scientific and these claims are proven with science. And the basics of science that I understand is that a claim needs to be empirically testable, which you guys do a great job of putting evidence out there, but it also has to be falsifiable. And I find it very difficult to falsify claims, a lot of claims that are made. Now, I'm not saying they're not uh, socially correct or economically correct, but I think you cross a line when some of these claims you say are backed by science. And I guess I, I, guess I just need an example of a, of a claim made by the trans community that can be falsified and what we would expect to see if it wasn't true. Ben. What specific ben. claim did did you want to talk about? What what claim do you think well, is unfalsified? There, there, 
let, I, and I sort of thought that's for to clear things up. I sort of thought that's where this was going. So I'm going to take it down to the very basics. A biological male goes to the doctor. He tells the doctor he's a, a woman. What test can that doctor do to, you know, lack of a better term, prove that it's true? I mean, are there certain things that that patient can do that would falsify his claim to be a woman? If not, so I, I so just here's see the problem. As, here's the problem. I don't though. see the You're conflating number one. You're conflating an identity with a biological feature, uh, which is a problem. So you you're not going to do a uh, a medical or biological test for something that's going on psychologically or sociologically, right? That's just not they're not the same field uh, at all. So, but let me let me respond to this because I am somebody who is about to be a primary care physician in the next few months. I have accepted a job. I am going to be a primary care physician. This is, this is what I do. Um, so let's say somebody comes in to the doctor and they say, uh, I am a man. The, their identity of being a man does not necessarily relate to what organs they have. I can do examinations and tests to determine what organs they have or what hormones they have or what genetics they have. I can do all of those things. The thing is, though, I don't make general assumptions based on, like, for what's going to happen to my patient based on just whatever they say. What they say is going to come into account. It's a variable that I take in in addition to every other variable that I see within this particular patient's case, right? So what's happening now, um, if someone, because I'm very well aware that a patient that comes into my office could be cis or they could be trans. I don't know. So what happens? I sit down with this person and they say, they might say they're a woman or they're a man. Usually they don't come in the room and just say, I'm a man. That's a weird thing to say uh, just right off the bat to your doctor. But anyway, we start having a conversation about their medical history, about their, the medications that they take. And I might ask a question like, have you ever had a surgery? And they might say, yeah, I had a vaginoplasty a few years ago. And that would tell me, hey, this is a person who had a history of this procedure. So I know that component of their history. They, they might also say, I take estrogen therapy. And I might say, okay, uh, what is the purpose for you taking estrogen therapy? And they might tell me, well, I'm trans. Cool, awesome. That's a variable I take in. So just the fact that somebody uh, is a man or a woman does not mean that I disregard the entire rest of the conversation. There's a process here, right? So here's the problem too, is that, that you're trying to demand a one question or like one statement presentation and then i'm then supposed to do this very specific i have to figure out and verify whether x is true well, we haven't even addressed any of the conversation so i think uh i think this is a terrible example but i, I i'll let katie address this as well <laughs> Yeah, so I've, I've obviously Ben is the doctor here and is the expert, but I guess in a general sense, uh, you know, coming at this from kind of the science perspective where we say, you know, we want falsifiable claims and you, you have an example, I think that I would just agree with the claim, with the assertion that we can't know for sure. There's no tests available if we pick one random person to determine 100% whether they're trans or cis. We don't have that. All we have is um, like population level observations. If if I have um, you know a group of people, if I have like a hundred people who are trans or who say they are trans, and I can say, oh look, you know, sixty percent of them said that they experienced this in childhood, and eighty percent of this say they experience this every day, and you know, forty five percent of them say, I can build up this picture where I can say. Oh well, it's likely that you know someone who presents these symptoms has this condition of being trans, has gender dysphoria. But I can't say, oh, anyone who you know, like when you've got a broken bone, if I do an X-ray, I can say, oh, if I can see a hole in the bone, then the bone is broken. But there are loads of conditions where I can't do that. Like depression is another one. Lots of ones which don't have like physical breakages, um, where I can say, well. You hit loads of the symptoms, so I would say you're likely a trans person, you're likely depressed, you're likely whatever, whatever. Um, but the falsifiable part is, if 
like it isn't on an individual level and i think we can have a population level like falsifiability where we can say um okay i don't know if any one particular individual is a hundred percent trans or cis you know I, I just don't know that but what i can say is we know that when we see these symptoms in a hundred people and we prescribe medical transition to a hundred people 99 percent of them are going to report that their life got better that is something we can see statistically and we have lots of evidence for that and i could say my falsifiable claim is if gender identity doesn't exist and if being trans isn't a thing then well, I mean, we would assume that most people who you just, if you just randomly pick people to transition, if I just picked a hundred random people off the street and forcibly transitioned them, my prediction is that, well, probably a hundred or maybe 99 of them would, their life would be significantly worse. Um, that That's my like prediction. And I think that's a falsifiable claim. Whereas if we got a hundred people who said they were trans and we gave them the ability to medically transition, probably 99 of them would have a would report self report that the life was better and maybe one of them is lying maybe one of them is delusional and has no sense of self maybe you know someone has to whatever there's a lot of maybes and on an individual level but on a population level we're going to see these kind of um trends appear and i think that's probably without discovering a brain structure that results in transness or a gene which says someone's gay or whatever the best we're ever going to be able to do is population level and i think maybe you could say oh well that's not as good as a broken leg and yeah but i think it's as good as many conditions like depression is one of them but like other things like being gay i mean can we know for sure whether someone is gay and the answer is no even if there is a man who is currently engaged in the act of having sex with another man that doesn't really mean anything i mean he could be a straight person it's possible i mean it's happened there are straight men who have had sex with men and been like actually this isn't for me at all and now they're straight and okay so that means we don't have a hundred percent test for gayness but at a population level we absolutely know that gay exists because if being gay wasn't a thing then we couldn't look around us and see all these hundreds of men and women who are happy in same-sex relationships i mean there are loads of there are loads of things that's not the only example but do you see what i mean about the difference between like individual and population level can, falsifiability and can then, i add sorry, something to you wanna... i know before yeah. before kyle jumps in um are there times in medicine like since we're specifically talking medicine here are there times in medicine where i don't need to know the exact underlying cause Um, as long as you can treat the symptoms, I guess that's one way to go at it. I mean, depending yeah, so on So there the are times when I, like, there are times when I could, I could prove 100% what the cause was, but it would be absolutely pointless. For example, let's say you have, you have a common cold or some kind of upper respiratory infection. Um, I don't have any evidence that it's bacterial, so it's probably viral. Um... Should I then do a, I can do a test to find exactly what virus you have, um, but my treatment's going to be the exact same, no matter what virus it comes out to be. So is it worth it? Uh, knowing that all tests have risks and it's going to cost you some money to get this done, would it make any difference for me to do that confirmatory test? Or is that a time when it would be, uh, I could just take it as we don't know, but my treatment's going to resolve whatever's going to happen. Okay, um, I'm going to respectfully say I believe that you guys have skirted around science and went to sociology, especially talking about population. And as far so as so, you're just avoiding my medicine, point because it, I proved you wrong. No, okay, cool. <laughs> can can you hear me out, please? Okay, good time. Okay, I think we all agree that the scientific method is very static, right? There are certain I disagree. steps that have to be taken. Well, I, I agree. Hold on. Oh, I agree that the oh. method is static, but the problem is, no, hold on. And this is a problem that I see from a lot of the, the GC crowd, is that they say that science is static and that what we, what we know, like, the truth doesn't change. And, like, what is true, I would grant, 
all, most of what is true does not change. However, we've been incorrect in the past, and we keep learning more, and we add on more nuance and more details to what is true. And while the method, the method itself of the scientific method, uh, can be used over and over again, the same method, that does not mean that what we learned from that method is static. Uh, science is dynamic. So I, I don't accept that. Uh, I, I'll clarify. The scientific method is static. You form a hypothesis, you test the hypothesis. Um, as the results come in, they lead to a direction. You also conduct tests that would prove it wrong and see that they always yeah. fail. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, um, but we've done that. We've transferred. And you're right. Away. Science changes because it's falsifiable. Um, yeah. Where but we've I done think that many of the claims. So there are. Uh, it doesn't seem to me there are, or, and I could be absolutely way off base here because of my exposure to the world. But how often does it happen that a person goes to a professional and claims to be trans, and that professional after conducting tests and surveys and all this comes back and says this you is know hilarious what? this You're is absolutely kyle this is absolutely hilarious to me um what familiarity do you have with uh how to diagnose a patient do you do you diagnose patients ever how often do you of course do? not of okay course not. how not well do you understand i diagnose the diagnostic myself at times process. if that counts okay it doesn't <laughs> i mean I it doesn't so the fact that you don't see professionals who do this as their job um, sifting through data and saying that a treatment might not be good for everybody doesn't mean that it's not happening in my sphere. There are plenty of times I think where a patient comes to me and says that this is what I believe is the right treatment for me, you should do it. And I've said, no, that's actually not the correct thing. There are plenty of times where someone might say uh, that, that they're trans and I might say, hey, this might not be the right step for you right now. Let's wait. I'm totally open to that being a possibility. So I think you're, you're dishonestly uh, using your own experience with this and saying that this entire community of, of healthcare professionals are, are not sifting through the data and not thinking diagnostically. So I think I, maybe I another, way to, another way to look at this is um, the difference between uh, like what, what we could say, you know, science, you're saying the process is we come up with thing and it's falsifiable, whatever. For sure. That is absolutely the process, the scientific method. Um, and and uh, the goal of that is to come up with the best possible worldview that matches reality. Like that, that's the whole point in science. And the point in medicine, which is like, you know, it's a form of, uh, it's like science in action. Um, the point in medicine is in attempt to make people's lives better. And the thing is, when you, as, as a doctor or a surgeon or whatever, you're presented with a bunch of symptoms and it's kind of like a flow chart. You're like, is this person screaming in pain, holding their foot? Well, it's probably a foot problem. No. Okay. It's probably not a foot problem. You know, you, you kind of go through this flow chart, but you don't get to the point where you say, I am going to do a test and I know a hundred percent that this test will either rule out or guarantee something. Like if and the reason I say broken leg is if you see someone and they have like a 90 degree angle in the middle of their shin, their leg is broken. You know, that is a falsifiable test. You can be like, hey, if someone has a straight shin, then their leg isn't 90 degrees broken. And if it's 90 degrees broken, then they're fucked. You know, that is a test you can, you can guarantee. But most of medicine is not that. Most of medicine is in a situation where you're like, okay, with a heavy fever, and they have like some swelling here, uh, but they don't have this other condition, and and they do have the and like it's probably like the first thing we're gonna do is test their kidneys, and the second thing we're gonna do is test. And I I know this like recently I had gallstones and I had like intense abdominal pain. It was fucking grim, and I had like some other things. And the doctors are like, okay, the first thing we're gonna try for is gallstones, but if it's not that. Then we're going to check liver stuff, and if it's not that, then we're going to check this other thing. And it's like, well, ninety percent of the time it's kidney. And the re okay, kind of getting lost in the weeds here. But what I'm saying is, is that medicine is like trying. It's 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 like a detective. We're trying to find the cause, mm. and it's based upon the science. And the scientific method itself says, okay, well, 
you know, previously we found that when we, uh, you know, when you have a stone in your gallbladder, like tube thing, it can cause pain. You know, that's like a, a claim that we can test in a scientific thing. But, and and that we've kind of got these two spheres that when a trans person turns up to a doctor and says, hey, doc, I feel like a woman, I want to transition. This is like the medicine side. And the doctor can't be like, oh, your leg is at 90 degrees. That means that I am going to prescribe you estrogen. Instead, the doctor can, the best thing they can do is like follow this detective process where they're like, oh, well, you know what? You've got all of these other things. And 99% of the time, when someone shows up with these symptoms, transition is the best thing for them. And and totally, like, that's 99%. That, that is not, that does not mean it's perfect. That does not mean it's this hard and fast law of the universe. That is not like some kind of physics declaration where we say two electrons cannot occupy the same state. Like, that is a hard law of the universe. When someone turns up and they say, I've wanted to transition my whole life, cis people don't generally say that, but not 100% of the people who say that are trans people, for sure. You know, there are people who regret transition. But the point is that this kind of understanding of transition as a treatment is based upon loads of science that we actually have done using the scientific method. And I, I, I've, I would say that I do reject this point about mixing up with sociology because population level studies are an essential part of science. When we do something like vaccines and stuff, yeah, look you know, at epidemiology. Are population level. Yeah, epidemiology is a population level science. There's, it's not a fluffy nonsense science like psychology. I know some people are very derogatory of that. Sorry to all the psychologists watching. But like, you know, the purest form of science is like physics. But like epidemiology and virology and stuff, they they are population level sciences which are very testable. Uh, you know, we we can come up with a vaccine and we can say when we inject people with this, the chance of them dying literally just goes down by 90%. We can observe that. And this was what transition's like. If we deny trans people transition and then we compare them to a group which are allowed transition, their rate of happiness goes up. Their rate of suicide goes down. Like These are observable things and they're predictions we can make. And we can't do it 100% on an individual level, but on a population level, 99%, exactly. that's the position we're at. Well, and with and with this, like medicine, like Katie was saying, it, it's a lot of detective work, but then a lot of management is uh, risk stratification. Like that's, especially if we're thinking at a physician level, a lot of what we're taught uh, is how do you stratify someone's risk of X versus risk of Y? So like, let's say I've narrowed it down in my detective process to you have uh, probably this thing or this thing or both, whatever. Now I need to figure out what to do about it. I have to decide what are the risks of giving you this treatment versus not. And what is likely going to happen? For example, if someone has atrial fibrillation where their, uh, their atria of their heart just like quivers and doesn't actually pump, you can get blood clots that you can shoot off a stroke into your brain. So there's, there's a, a kind of nuanced debate we have to have with ourselves of is your risk of a blood clot greater than your risk of bleeding out if I, if I give you a blood thinning medication. This is often what we're balancing here. It's, it's risks and risk stratification. With a trans person, it might be, what are the risks of this person having um, like suicidal ideation versus uh, not if, if I give them this treatment? It's risk stratification. And so I think uh, simplifying it down to, I have this solid piece of 100% proof that you are trans is, is not necessarily the goal. The goal is, can I reduce your risks of complications? And uh, is my treatment going to be more beneficial than not? That's the, it's the utility piece that I think you're missing here. And I, I don't want to necessarily uh, give everybody homework on this show, but I think maybe you'd, you'd benefit from shadowing a doctor uh, <laughs> sometime <laughs> and, and have them talk you through their process of how they think through a case. Because I think, I think that's something that is kind of lost. Uh, in this conversation. Kyle, what do you think? We've talked a lot. Go for it. Yeah. No, uh, actually, I, I, I love the show. These are, these are things that, uh, while I'm watching, um, generally they're from previous shows that I feel as if I should push back on. I appreciate you guys Please taking do. my call and uh, at least hearing me out. Um, a lot of good stuff. I guess 
I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm swayed or I'm not swayed because I always try to make sure that I'm open-minded enough that if, if things are not the way I like, too bad. It is what it is. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get off here and let you take other callers. I appreciate you taking my call. And you guys have a great holiday. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. I, you know, I appreciate callers like you who do ask questions that on, you know, I like it. I like the challenge. And if, you know, if you feel, if you have a think about what we say and you're like, no, nah, you know what? I'm not convinced at all. Call back. I want to hear it. Uh, it's good stuff. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, thanks, Kyle. Have a good Christmas. Oh, I thought we had another caller, but I think we just dropped them. Um, do we have another caller? Should we go for another caller? Does anyone want to call in at the last minute? Eight minutes not past them. when the show is supposed to end and you ask if we should do another call. <laughs> Katie's right. just ready to I'm just, go. I'm Katie's on, on fire. We're, we're not having another caller because um, fuck it, it's Christmas. Right, but what we will do in a second is Super Chats. But before we go on to Super Chats, which where if you spend $5 or more, we will read out. We will read out whatever you say no limit unless it's praising mayonnaise in which case i will delete you from this channel forever but not only can you do a super chat to make us read out anything but if you do a hashtag team kt or a hashtag team christmas because i am the christmas um then i will be the winner and when i'm the winner that means ben has to eat load of weetabix we haven't decided what the punishment is yet but it's basically going to be some cereal based punishment for ben or me you know, you could vote you could vote against me if you hate me and you don't think trans people are good. And then, you know, whatever. But basically that's the next stage of the show. But first, Ben, how do you think the show's gone? I feel like I've been in absolute rant mode. Have you got a word in Edwards? Uh, I have also I don't even know how much of what I've said makes sense, but uh inevitably after the show, somebody's gonna be like, Wow, you said some great things. I'm gonna be like, like what? I don't I don't know. But I hope it went well. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what happens when you are drunk. You should not be drunk on this show, Ben. Um, I'm not. I haven't even finished my <laughs> one beer yet. I've been slow. <laughs> so we are moving on to Super Chats. Um, do you want to go first? I'm going first. All right. $5 from Alyssa. Uh, Noel 2019 on Disney Plus shows how misogynistic an all-male Council of Elves can be. Cute movie overall with some emotional moments. Four out of five. Hashtag team felines. So I guess that's a vote for you, Katie. Because I don't have a Yay! feline. I have a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the like genus of hamsters? Rodent. I don't even know. I should look it up. <laughs> oh yeah, I get a Sean one. Five pounds from Sean Isherwood. Let S be a semi-group. Okay, I don't know what semi-groups are already. Bad start. Then S is a group <laughs> if and only if A S equals S equals S A. For all A in the group of S where A S oh god, okay. Mate. <laughs> uh is okay, yeah, this is beyond me, I'm afraid, Sean. So I don't know what a semi-group is, so I think that's a bad start. I guess this is some set theory. Um okay. well it's actually really, it's good that there a are really people... easy concept, but we don't have time for me to explain. <laughs> it's but it's so simple. Anyway, who's next? Super one? simple, I'm sure. So best producer ever. Five pounds. Right, okay. Five pounds from Vala Celine. Definitely want to see Ben eat dry Weedabix hashtag team Katie. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is going to be bad for me because now people want me to eat hay bales. I want like to see Ben eat a dry Weetabix as well. Everybody start voting and we need 25 points minute total combined. <laughs> uh, and I sort of want Katie to win because I'd like to see that because Katie's obviously got a tolerance already. Hey, I can yeah. deep throw Weetabix. Let's go. What? Right. No. Oh, oh now that's going to get some, that's going to get some team Ben votes for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, let's go. No one's throat is that wide. Like the the problem is the shape. It's like it's a square. It's like a lozenge, but like as big <laughs> as your fist. Like... <laughs> <laughs> can we have a clip that's just that? <laughs> I can deep throat a weedabix. Is that? 
<laughs> yeah, I can deep throw to Weedabix and then also the explanation of it being a lozenge, but this yeah, kind of fucked up lozenges. <laughs> Like the UK sounds like so much fun. I'm ready to go. Let's let's get on a plane right now. <laughs> oh, well, we broke Katie. <laughs> Five pounds from Andrew D. Hashtag Team Ben. I'm curious how you each chose your new name. Do you mean? I'm guessing. Thank you for helping teach me to change my thoughts on trans people while deconstructing from Mormonism. Oh, amazing. Thanks, Andrea. <clears throat> I picked my name because I asked my parents what I would have been called if I was born a girl, and they said Caitlin, and I was like, nope. <laughs> I don't think any trans women ought to be called Caitlin ever since Caitlin Jenner. And I just thought Katie was a nice name. Um, yeah. There's a few more things, yeah. but you have that to call in. That formula only a... works if you don't have a younger sister, I feel like. Because presumably, if I hadn't been named what I was named, I would have been, if, if I had been born a girl, I would have had what was my then next sister's name. But it would be funny to do mm. anyway if I were to go around and and take the name of someone who already so, has that name. So in I have family. a cool story. I have a cool story behind my chosen name. Um. So my my full name is actually Torben, and it's Danish for Thor's bear or Thunder Bear. Take your pick on that. Um, but I do have Norwegian heritage, but I didn't pick the Norwegian <clears throat> spelling because it's Thorbjorn and more difficult to pronounce. Um, but this name came because one of my jujitsu coaches started calling me Torben as kind of a a joke nickname, and one of my teammates was. I had found out that I, I had come out as trans. I had not chosen a name at that point. And they're like, oh, it's, it's Torben, your new name. And I was like, huh, that's actually an interesting thing. I'll, I'll consider it. And uh, it turns out the meaning is absolutely cool. Like, who doesn't want to be a, a Viking bear? Um, but the fact that it came from somebody who was meaningful to me uh, and who still aff affirms me in, in my transition, uh, you know, I, I had to go with it. And it's kind of a play on my dead name as well. And it it's a name that, while it's not super well-known in English, uh, it can be seen as more masculine or more feminine, depending on how I want to break it up. So I had a lot of thought going to my name. So so just before we move on, on uh, on Jimmy's point about um, naming like siblings and stuff, I follow some, well, I'm, I'm aware of some of these garbage gender critical pages which pick out the worst trans people of all time. And, you know, like, obviously 99% of it's fucking prejudice wank and it's horrific and lots of it's made up. But there was one where this lady had written in and she was like, I try to be supportive of LGBT people, you know, whatever. I fell out with my, like, sibling ages ago over something else. And my sibling has picked my name and their transition and I don't know what to do. And oh man, and it was just, I think it was real from reading all of the comments and their response to the comments. And, and like, obviously this is one of those one in a trillion situations where it just has probably never happened again, never happened since and never happened again. But like at one point a trans person has picked the name of their sibling and it's <laughs> cringe as shit. <laughs> anyway, yeah, don't let's do move on. Next. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, I think I think it's me know, to read. To okay, you go for it. Oh, okay. Five dollars from Aubrey. I'm Team Katie, ninety nine percent of the time, but call me conservative because today I'm all about the one percent. Hashtag Team Bahumbug. Hashtag Team Ben. I don't, I don't know if that's a compliment saying that you're feeling conservative today. So vote Team Ben. <laughs> it's because you're a fucking but you straight white the cis male mate. Yeah, 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 exactly. I do represent the patriarchy. You. This is true. Yeah. When I say but, I'm pro know, misandry, it means pro trans misandry too. Because <laughs> trans men are men. <laughs> Ben's going to become a doctor Next. and then start voting Republican because of taxes. Because <laughs> <laughs> he can earn six figures. Yeah. Um, 2799 Canadian dollars, one cent too cheap to be a $28 donator. From Nilly Wilson, happy holidays, great show, snowman emoji. Thank you very much, Nilly. I'm sorry for dissing your 
one cent short but, donation. But how do you know it's kind. a snowman? How do you know what gametes the snowman makes? Sorry, a snow person of indiscriminate sex. Actually, <laughs> you know, that's even worse. We must know. Please, someone super chat in what the genitals of the snowman are, because otherwise Mayor Forstater is going to have a bad Christmas. Yeah. And a carry on Christmas, Christmas anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it just reminds W's me when in I chat talk. For May Fool State having a bad Christmas. <laughs> it does remind me though of when I talk about like political stuff and how Republicans are trying to to bastardize trans people, and I call it the the boogie person because it would be misgendering to call it the boogie man. Trans people are the boogie man. <laughs> yeah, but they, it's their new boogie person. Hilarious. Sorry, I lost. I'm trying to find this. Yeah, this was us not laughing at your joke. Next! You know what, Ben? You know what? <laughs> this Shut is how up. I get kicked off the show. <laughs> hey, Ben. Hey, Ben and Katie, after you want to attend a clinic on how to promptly take a call? <laughs> hey, Jimmy, do you want to be the best host ever and shut up? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some hashtag Katie, Team Jimmy's in. Turn. Now or, I no, want to win. Let's They'll not, both eat a weed of Bix. it's my turn. Uh, five euros from Yasmin Meadowflower. Reindeers eat vegan mayo because they are herbivores. Maybe I'm a reindeer too because I also eat vegan mayo. Hashtag Team Mayo. I support disgusting. you. Also, do you know what was... There's two levels of disgusting here. One is disgusting mayonnaise and the other is disgusting that Americans say herb instead of herb. Herbivore? <laughs> what are you on about? Yeah. Fuck off. Hashtag fuck off America. <laughs> Next. <laughs> hey, I'm Team Scotland and Spain this week. Team Scotland and Spain. Five dollars from Michael Abel. I am so proud of Wes for coming out as an non binary on air. <laughs> Using any pronouns is a big step towards self ID. So happy for them. She's the best. <laughs> Well, okay, so I have, I have a, I, I enjoy the, the joke. But secondly, just because you use different pronouns doesn't necessarily mean you're non binary. But also, lol. Also, Next. Jimmy added an extra like 20 points for me. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, I'm I not just forgot that. to hit backspace when I changed the two <laughs> to a three. It's not a I simple system you. where I just get to hit like, Add a point. I I have to manually type it. Four ninety nine from Louise Richardson. Sorry, I'm late. Happy holidays from me on my seventy fifth birthday. Happy birthday, forty plus years from GRS. Congrats. That is an amazing accomplishment, and we're happy to have you in our chat. Thank you for the support. Uh, I'm not going to wish you happy birthday because I think I did it last week. So don't get greedy. <laughs> you can wish a person yeah, thanks, happy Louise. birthday twice. What's this with this? No, that'll make you seventy-six, wouldn't it? Louise yeah, gets so you five Santa, dollars. Santa, you Lady can't Santa afford. up there is stingy. Stingy Wait, as how many fuck dollars? this Christmas. How many dollars does she give us? I gave you five dollars. Four ninety-nine. Her... Four ninety-nine. Louise, if you sent one more cent, then maybe. I'll... <laughs> okay, vote, they, vote the team hashtag team is... Bah Humbug because stingy Santa is not giving out happy happy birthdays to people. <laughs> It, it's limited based on whether or not a person is doing it from mobile or their PC is it, what the numbers get determined by. Basically, I am Mrs. The Christmas, and I say Louise has been naughty and not nice this year. So, Mrs. It's a stingy, it's not stingy Christmas. Santa pants. Yeah, birthday. Okay, okay, Ben is Mr. Birthday yeah. and gets the final call. When I, was, when I was four, I didn't understand that it next being week. Christmas didn't make it f me five years old. Did you just try and next over my story? I'll go away and <laughs> damn well please. Thank next. you. Next. How fucking dare you? Look what I can do to the scoreboard. Six pounds <laughs> from uh, Malika Kuntz. Anti-trans logic. 90% of black people have had a negative experience with police. Therefore, negative police interactions cause skin to darken. Yeah, I mean, you're, that, that logic is kind of where they're going from. Also, uh, yeah, I agree with the 30,000 Team Ben points. I, you know what? I'll be Team Jimmy if, if he keeps doing that to the scoreboard. So. <laughs> 
five Australian dollars from Jacob Andron Andriokos Andronikos. Jackie visiting family over Chrissy. Dad made some typical trans jokes that felt pretty garbage yesterday. Bit of a sad day. Oh well, Team Katie. Sorry to hear that, Jackie. That's uh, garbage. <laughs> it's a shame when uh, um, your family don't have enough respect for you as a person to not treat you like shit. But hopefully they'll come round. It took me like three or four Christmases to get back to normal. It is doable. You just got to fight through them. Uh, just so everyone watching people. knows we are not currently trending to hit 25 points. We'll do the real points, but we need more votes. So send in five dollars from Alyssa. Conservative will say Bill Nye is an engineer, not a scientist as a debunk face palm. By the way, you should do a special three person episode with Malcolm in the middle. That would actually be funny. <laughs> the, the plan Malcolm in the middle. Um, but yeah, I have heard that it, that uh, engineers aren't scientists. It's like. Uh, it's applied science, and people could say make the same argument about doctors because medicine is also an applied science. But like science is kind of useless if you don't apply it. Like you can <laughs> mentally masturbate all you want and think about whatever, but if you can't utilize it in the real world, then what's the fucking point? So, uh, hashtag Team Engineers and Team Doctors. <laughs> yeah, I, I, at university and college, I remember like all our lecturers were just like. Well, an engineer is a scientist who makes money, so <laughs> probably true for doctors too. Ten Australian dollars from Vay Stevens. Merry Christmas to you all, and keep up the good work in 2023. Well, the rate that Scotland and Spain are going, maybe I'll never have to fight for trans rights again. But no, we've got a long way to go. Let's keep going. 2023 hype. Um, yeah, thanks, Vay. 2023 is going to be lit, at least from my perspective. <clears throat> Five pounds from Katinka Palatine. Watching an hour late, but here's uh, hashtag Team Katie from Scotland. Yeah, Scotland. Scotland. Hashtag. I know you. I know you. You said Team Katie, but you know what? For today, I will. I will support this comment because uh, of Scotland doing so well. But it's just this one time. Hamilton. <laughs> I know I say that. I say that and I have that last name. It's fine. We're fine. Uh, I was just... waiting for Jimmy to tell a story before I said and... next. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Ben. I just tried to I just did one of the polls and I tried to lean the polls for you, but now fuck you. Vote for Katie, who's mean as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Ten dollars from James Cole. Here is a kiss for Team Katie. Aww. Thanks, James. <laughs> <laughs> Five dollars from Diana Anderson. Hi, you two in all caps. Diana. I wanted to send in some cash to celebrate that I had my first <clears throat> appointment to start the process of getting on tea today. Yay! Congrats. Tea is amazing. Uh, everyone should do tea. I'm, I'm biased. Just give it, uh, everyone do testosterone. It'll make your life better. Sorry, trans women. But that's my experience. The my experience is the created. only one that matters. <laughs> <laughs> testosterone is the worst thing God ever created. And that's why we should destroy God. I felt that way about estrogen, so. <laughs> 999 from Arden. Wait, is this our Arden? No, Did the other Arden... Arden... Oh, different. I, I was thinking, like, if R. Arden couldn't even be asked to send in a comment, like, that'd be pretty. No, if brutal. it was R. Arden, it would be R. Arden would be voting for neither of us and saying something mean to both of us. So that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but no, can you imagine the ultimate burn from Arden would just be to send the super chat with no comment? <laughs> just like yeah, <laughs> that actually it. probably they need be. my money. It's just like throwing <laughs> a tenner at you and just walking off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't put it past her though. Five pounds from Chris Jefferson. To the caller debating a GC, know what a gish gallop is and call it out when you get hit with one or you can get swamped. Hashtag Team Christmas. Uh, yeah, good point. But also, don't vote for Katie. This is oppression. This is, this is oppression. Trans men are inferior. 
I'm Thanks. back on voting for Katie still. So vote for Katie. But do send more mm-hmm. votes. Yeah, okay. Until Katie says something that you don't like, and then they'll be back on my side in no time. I I'm know. waiting. I've never I'm said aware. anything that Jimmy doesn't like. <laughs> it's your turn. Oh, 999 from Marco Hernandez. You both, you're both great. KT, you look beautiful. Thank you, Marco. No hashtag, no vote, though. So sorry. No yeah. hashtag, no vote. 569. Nice. From Grimbeard. Sorry, Katie. Despite being a fellow Brit, I'm on Team Bah Humbug. No well, we hashtag, did, no I, vote. I, I, we just said no hashtag, no vote. Uh, Damn it, people. <laughs> yeah, the instructions are so simple. <laughs> you gotta do the hashtag. <laughs> That's a lot to ask. Katie, it's you. 999 from Ramona. To both of you, what was the best Christmas gift you ever got? Okay, let's answer that before I go on. Ben? Uh, the best Christmas gift I ever got. That's hard. Uh, cause I, I can tell you mine, what you think yeah. the best Christmas gift I ever got. And this is in the context of me being a lot younger was the Lego electric train set. And I don't know why I was so hype about it, but I was so hype about it when I got it. It was just so cool. I'd seen TV adverts and like, it was really fun. And like, I just imagine like, you know, in like, I don't know, American cartoons or whatever, where they have a Christmas and then part of the Christmas celebration is there's a a Christmas tree with a train track going around it. I don't know why. I just thought that was the ultimate Christmas thing. And I loved Lego when I was growing up. So it was just really cool. And I was really Lego or Mega Blocks? It was Lego. It was a legit Lego and it wasn't Legos. It was Lego without an S because I'm not a fucking. I'll America. actually defend that Mega Bloks are better. My best Christmas gift was a oh, Mega Bloks battleship. Are. Yeah, yeah. You want to know why? I will not defend that. No. Legos, Legos purposefully under manufacture and use make lots of specialty pieces, whereas Mega Bloks teaches you how to make these amazing, still looking accurate things out of mostly just basic types of pieces. I think that that's better. Yeah, I'm not really interested in that argument. Basically, I got the electric train set from Lego and it was amazing. But do you know what? Just related on this, I so I'm hosting Christmas for the first time ever, which I said at the start of the show. And I was like, oh, I can get from my parents' house this old electric Lego train set and get it out and going around my Christmas tree. And I'll just feel like I'll just feel like I'm in a film, like I finally made it. And I bought some extra train track pieces. In order to make it bigger, I haven't, done, I haven't played with Lego or like this thing in like literally like 30 years or whatever. No, 25 years. And so I bought this train track and they're not compatible. <laughs> like, I'm just an idiot. Like, why? I was just like, oh, just buy some more Lego train track. But like, of course it's not compatible. Like, I got it in like 1996. Like, what idiot thinks that the thing made in 1996 is still just. Anyway, I got wrecked. Ben, what's your favorite gift? Um, so I mean, just being I guess this this might make me an adult, but like anytime I get an appliance or like some household <laughs> item, it's glorious. Like uh recently what I got like a food processor a couple years ago, amazing. That Great be time. Good. Food processor yeah, is so, a good gift. There's so many yeah, capitalists like in the audience. Ugh, you all falling for the Lego Monopoly propaganda. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. Fuck off, Mega Blocks. Mega Blocks are always. A, we didn't read the rest of the comment. We had stopped to talk oh, about yeah. our Christmas. Hey ben, love to see you go full doctor on callers. Yeah, so do I. To Katie, love to see you yield the frick up. <laughs> <laughs> that sums us up. I like it when Ben is really intelligent and knows everything. Katie, I like it when you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm fine with that. 69, 69. So oh, I have to say nice twice. Nice. Nice, nice. twice. Because two nice is nice for each one of the 69s. Anyway, from hey, cool Robin fact, Tastig. Tesla, yeah. Tesla shares have dropped 69% this year. Nice. Oh, good. Nice. Anyway, next. <laughs> happy holidays to you all don't forget that love is greater than hate 
Hashtag bad Santa. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a vote for Katie because Katie's the only uh, Santa in the room. But yeah, that's also an in. Is that a compliment or an insult that you're like a, a bad Santa? I, I don't tell. know. I'll, I'll take the vote. Look at this pussycat flipping egg. If this was a different Next. show and it wouldn't be so fucked up to take everything away from trans issues, I would 1000% take over the show right now and just argue with everybody about Mega Blocks versus Legos. <laughs> this live chat. Y'all are so simple minded people. You've just fallen for so much commercialism. Disgusting. Oh my God. No, no more cis people. Cis shut up for the show. Five dollars yeah. from Mr. Monster. Lego is the best. Next comment. I can mute you. No, Did you know that? I am a straight cis male and I support Lego. And I support trans people <laughs> and under any umbrella of the LGBTQ, I will call in one of these days and ask a ton of questions. Please do. That will be great. You can ask anything you like. Like, why is Poppy so cute? Katie, why is your pussy on the screen right now? <laughs> Fucking hell, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> we still need more votes for the Weedabix. Because so you like know. it. Yeah, we more. Y'all want Weedabix, we need votes. <laughs> Five euros from Thomas Donald Jacobs. Jesse Gender is awesome and we should all send her love. Hashtag Team Mayo is the best. Jesse oh, Gender is I was pretty ready great. to support you. Jesse's great and Ben, you've been out the loop. He said, so JK Rowling just went for Jesse Gender this week. Oh um, shit. Like tagged her in and everything. Je like Jesse wrote the most like, to be honest, if I'd seen it without this context, I would have actually think that she was being too soft. But Jesse was like, I love Harry Potter. I've got all the books and films. Oh, and I, saw I that. think anyone yeah. who likes anyone who likes Harry Potter, that's fine. But I don't think you should buy the new game because if you buy a new thing, you're supporting JK Rowling. And JK Rowling went on some like absolutely deranged straw man rant about how if you like Harry Potter, then you're the devil or something. Like just complete garbage didn't address anything jesse said at all well obviously jk rowling fans are like the worst people on earth so jesse got loads of fucking hate and abuse for it mm. and she was such a nice person and she was just like being nice about jk rowling if anything like just she can just like jk rowling can fuck off and yeah. like everybody go get, leave get some absolutely support wrecked. go say nice things absolutely get wrecked you stupid disgusting billionaire your country the country you live in that you weren't even born in fuck off just voted against the one conspiracy theory that you've gone all in on and i hope your life is significantly worse um you loser anyway sorry next <laughs> i feel like that's gonna get clipped on jk's timeline she watches all these programs i'm Good. sure Fuck off, J.K. Rowling. Good. You are an absolute loser who can't defend your mm. positions, and you are a liar. I think this Sorry, is you. Ben. Oh, I think this six is you. pounds from Malika Kuntz. Interesting name. Um, congratulatio, congratulatio, NS Ben. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Team Katie. Hashtag Team Had Lozenge. <laughs> Yeah, you're Weedabix <laughs> lozenge, Katie. But also, oh. um, thank you for the congrats. For people who weren't following, I matched into residency this past week. So I am confirmed going to be a family doctor no, next year. Ben. And I matched at a very prestigious program. So No one gives a shit about this. What? She's saying congratulations because you're going to eat a Weedabix next week. That's what the congratulations is about. Oh, definitely. Well, no one also, I matched into residency. <laughs> Not if we don't hit 25. I'm going to end the uh, chat poll yeah. in like one minute. So anybody who hasn't voted in the chat poll, you got like you got like a minute. I need a wee so bad. So we better get these votes soon. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> Let's get through this. <laughs> Next one. $5, Five from dollars from TV. Oh, it's you. Hashtag Team Katie. You are now your favorite animal. What are you and what's the first thing you do? Any, uh, <clears throat> any social tips or name changes? Um, my favorite animal is the trash panda, a.k.a. the raccoon. And uh, w what's the first thing I would do as this raccoon? I would cause mass chaos and uh, dumpster dive and climb everybody's houses. I think Katie. my favorite animal <laughs> probably is kind of lame. I think it probably just is a cat. Um, I nearly said otter, 
I nearly said grasshopper or praying mantis or something, but I think it would just be a cat. And the first thing I would do is just have no worries. I would have no concern that some bigoted billionaire was trying to take away my rights. So, yeah, that would be my number one. And my tip for social changes is to start small. Tell one person. Give it a try. Tell someone else. Go slow. Just make it sure that everyone knows maybe it could change your mind. Then all the stress is gone. Yeah, I mean, my tips are the same, pretty much. I don't have a whole lot to add. Is it me? This is you. Five dollars from the Ronin, which I actually learned, I don't know if it's spelled the same way, but is like a failed samurai. It's like some, or someone who fails to study. I think it's like a, a joke insult in Japan. Anyway, deep <laughs> what? Uh, team Ben. <laughs> I feel like the what? only exceptions I'm ever going to make are when it's the literal team name. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you this yeah. one, but I'll hashtag it. I don't mind. Yeah, We're trying deep, to deep manipulate what, algorithms. <clears throat> 10 to 5, though. It's going to take a lot for Ben yeah. to win this one. Come on, guys. It's also going to take a lot pick. for uh, me to have to do the punishment. So uh, four ninety nine from Catholic Tutor. A study by the Karolinska Institute in Sweden showed 20 times higher suicide rates, 10 years post-transition, 300 plus people surveyed, 1973 to 2003. Is this true? So the studies that are often quoted are, are misquoted. And again, this goes back to like what caused what? Like I've heard this stat over and over again that that trans people are more likely to to commit suicide because trans being trans makes you suicidal or they were all they were already um depressed and that's why that they're trans just all trans people are depressed and this is flawed reasoning and we explained why throughout uh tonight's show um because more often than not it's because of the social pressures of being trans that causes you to to be more prone uh to have these these kinds of ideation so um, go back and watch most of the show where we talked about it. So in answer to this, um, this study, this is so um, like it's 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 like Andrew Wakefield's vaccine study. Like it's like one of the studies that stands out against the the mainstream consensus that all of the gender critics lean on. The Sweden study is so much that they call it the Sweden study. We call it the Sweden study. Like when it comes up, everyone fucking knows what's going on. It's such a uh, misquoted, misused study um, that it's like it's the one that they use every single time. Mm -hmm. When you ask gender criticals to do something, like for example, um, in England, when they did some inquiry and they got a load of experts to present evidence about whether we should reform our Gender Recognition Act, um, all of the trans people come up with fucking loads of stats from hundreds of different studies. The gender critical people who are Absolutely garbage people. One of them I used to be actually friends with. Anyway, they all went and um, just parroted off this study, but like missing out of the like key parts of it. First thing to point out is that the study's author themselves says this isn't what the data shows. There's there's several like major debunks on this. I think Zinnia Jones did one. I think that um, Ruth Pierce has done one. I think there's there's a lot of debunks on this particular study because mm. it's such a standout one. But like the key things to note are that I, that I remember off the top of my head, two things. One, this is a study from the 70s. Like we says 70s to 2003, but there's a huge um, number of the cohort from, you know, transitioned in the 70s. And it was very, the times are very different in the 70s um, on the support of trans people. And we there are countless other studies which show that the suicide rate for trans people, and particularly trans youths, but all trans people, goes down massively when trans people are supported. And actually, support and having a normal life are one of the biggest factors in uh, particularly suicide prevention. Um, so that, and that's something that in the 70s in Sweden just wasn't there. Like the chance of a trans person being supported was just very low. Um, but also there's no control here, not just control against cis people, but control against trans people who didn't transition or trans people who didn't have surgery. 
there's a lot of issues with that was the point the I was going to bring up. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. but um, read some of the debunks. The answer is no. The answer is that um, transition improves people's well-being. But also, Ben, you're about to read this one. I am. I am going to be right back, Jimmy. I'm really sorry, <laughs> okay. but I'm actually going to okay. die if I don't do away. All right, five dollars from Dylan Fuller. My younger sibling got a new name, Ace. My mom was immediately like Ventura, and now they're gonna dress him like uh, dress like him for their coming out party. That's awesome. I love to see that kind of support, and that's super exciting. I wish that my family uh, would be that supportive for for my coming out, but unfortunately, they were not. So I guess I'll keep reading these while Katie's gone. I have no problem with that. Just, you know, everybody, you know, Katie wouldn't even know if we just put all of them Team Ben. Like if she came back and everything was Team Ben, I don't think she'd she'd notice at all. Uh, five pounds from pancaking on hashtag Team Katie, but she will disown me for sure because yesterday I had a cheese omelet with mayo. Eva laugh. Um I feel this person. Yeah, wants I mean, your team, Katie. Sure she's Katie, not here, so. I think Katie. I, I think we should wait to proceed. I feel this person spent this money hoping. Yeah, I to think tell so too. Katie of the mayo omelet. I agree. Let's let's let Katie see this. Um. I do like your llama picture. That's nice. Are we going to sit in silence and just dead air it the yeah, whole time? Yeah, we're going to sit in silence. I don't know. I'm waiting oh. for Jimmy to tell. I figured Jimmy would have a story about it. Oh, sure something. you did. Yeah. I'm no, actually, you have tired lots of, of stories. this cisphobia. There are lots of things I can I can <laughs> say, and Jimmy, Jimmy will just be like, yeah, I got a story for that. Um, you can well, go I've, back to your Lego debate. Well, you could just. <laughs> I've lived a long, illustrious life, you know. I, uh, yeah. Well, which yeah. side do you come down on? Lego or Mega Me? Blocks? Um, I come I come down on on Team Lego. Horrible. I just feel yeah that it's 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 you get way more block per dollar. People who are saying the quality is way less. Isn't yeah, that's even true. the quality of the blocks. That's they're that's not, what I'm coming from. They're not yeah. way less. And then the people are like, and they're not compatible with Legos. Yes, they are. I mixed my what bins standards all the time. Of, what standards of quality? Are we using to determine whether Lego or Mega Blocks are higher quality blocks? Well, that's a like, good. Do we yeah, have a I mean, that's, that's a decent question. What? Neither of them are breaking. Yeah. Uh, but okay. Well, that's not Lego, the standard Lego, that I Lego's would. Like, that's not. I reject your definition for quality blocks. Lego um, has Katie, done. We, we Lego's like cereal. You, we have. Where to, they I read make this the already, boxes you should thinner and thinner it. and give you less and less, but they keep the price the same. That's Legos. They they're schemers. Anyway, we waited for you because the super chat was clearly meant to be heard by you. Five pounds from pancaking on. Oh, that's her name. Hashtag Team KT, but she would disown me for sure because yesterday I had a cheese omelette with broken glass. Fuck you. <laughs> ben gets that point. Not interested in that one. Next. <laughs> Oh, it's a forfeit point. It's a sympathy point from Katie. <laughs> Five dollars from Smart Alec Atheist. Since snow is frozen water and water is a fluid, how about a, a snow person is considered gender fluid? Hashtag Team Ben. <laughs> no, that's a it's a good argument. That is a good argument. Apart from water is a fluid, but snow isn't. So really, snowmen. The are snow like isn't. It's the only. They're the only ones who are solid. fixed in their gender. <laughs> See, gender mean fluidity get, like, uh, means that there are different states of gender, such as gender solid, gender gas, gender plasma, etc. So, yeah. can you shift between the different states of gender, and what does this look like? Well, if you put a so trans person on the sun, would they then be would they <laughs> sublimate into to gender gas? Like, how does this happen? <laughs> so what the difference is is obviously gender liquids take the sh or gender fluid takes the shape of its container but a gender gas fills its container but then like yep. a gender plasma each of the individual aspects of gender are disconnected from the others into some kind of superconducting uh magic stuff but there's actually other states of matter isn't there <laughs> yeah it's really cool yeah like there's the fucking yeah. neutron star cause anyway um, 15 shekels from Nati. In Hebrew, Ben also means boy. 
Hashtag Team Cat Cats for me. I actually have a uh, very depressing story, which I'm not going to oh, no. say here. But that was no, but that logic was actually used um, by my family to be transphobic. So, um, yeah, I, Katie, I can tell you about that really? backstage. But yeah, okay, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And here I was going to make a joke about how Ben Jamin must be translated to Island Boy, but now I can't. So. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. That's why I adopted the name. So that point goes to Katie, I think? Yeah, because yeah. I don't have a Thank cat. You. Yeah. So what does that put us on? 19. We're closing in. We're closing in, guys. Come on. Five pounds from Mystic Mind Analysis. Today I came out to my friends as trans femme envy. I have yet to present as feminine in public. Merry Christmas. Give me your trans straight hashtag team trans. So if you're a fence sitter, but I will give you the pass because congratulations uh, for coming out to your friends. That's a huge step. Yeah. And I'm very proud of you for, for taking that. So. By the way, when Ben called you a fence sitter then, it was because he meant you hadn't picked between the two of us, as in me and Ben, not because you're yeah, non-binary. Yeah, it's not because you haven't... <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, yeah. Thank you for clarifying, Katie. Yeah, no, you're a fence sitter because, because of your vote. That's the only thing I judge you on, is your vote. I would have loved the experience. So, fence sitter video. would be the most hilarious slur for non-binary people. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking fence sitter, pick a side! <laughs> Oh no! Thank you. That's congratulations on coming out. That is amazing. Um, I hope you can present as yourself soon. Um, five pounds from Missy Prime. Sorry, Ben. Watching people eat dry wheat bix makes me laugh. Well, that's the whole point, really, isn't it? We're going to be laughing at Ben. Yeah. Those have been rare this year. Don't tell him. I always vote for Katie. Shh. Hashtag Team Katie. Thanks, Missy Prime. I gotta Prime. pick worse punishments because it, anytime I pick a decent punishment. <clears throat> I lose because people want me to do it. So maybe I need to pick more boring punishment. <laughs> I'm surprised the promise of a deep-throated Weedabix didn't change the score, right? because I'll be honest. <laughs> I think you just watched me die on air. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. That, I think I could fit a whole Weedabix in my mouth, though. But I'm not going to do it because I dislocated my jaw when I tried to put lids of Pringles in my mouth once. So. Yeah, anyway, don't, don't do that. next. I have five pounds from Owlbear with wizard levels. Hashtag Team Katie. I got my estrogen prescription the same day as the GRR vote passed. It's going to be a, it's a good day Mate. to be trans in Scotland. Mate, That's that amazing. is a fucking so trilogy, happy. that is. Getting your prescription on the same day that your country passes the Gender Recognition Act. Winner. Mate. I hope you ride this out. I hope you have a great Christmas and I hope you do whatever you do to have a fun time. Five dollars from Nathan Winter. It is now winter. Glad we're in we're past autumn, the worst season of the year into winter. Getting top surgery on the third. And I am so freaking excited for it. Gotta vote for the trans mask team. Hashtag team Ben, hashtag team Pebbles. Okay, well, I'll let you off because you're having surgery and that's exciting. Great work, hmm. Nathan. Yeah, congrats. I'm a little jealous. Because Ben's but losing. Congrats. Yeah, it's the sympathy votes now, for, according to Katie. You should all go check out so. Ben's crowdfund, by the way. Ben, yes, how... I'm still trying to get surgery. Christmas. How uh, how cold is it where you are, Ben? That's oh, really not. It's like 50s right now. Really? Everybody, uh, we're yeah. we're like 20 something. I just turned my heater on for the first time this year. Yeah, really? Nailed, let me, let me nailed by that. a bomb cyclone in America. Yeah, uh, I heard it is that, um, 60, Colorado 65 is going to get down degrees. to minus. It was in real temperature. Here. Ours, uh, mine's 12 at the moment. Um, That's like real temps. I don't know. But My like, friend what, Dom we, sent... we got down to minus 4. Oh, yeah. My friend Dom sent a screenshot from Cheyenne. Their wind chills negative 40. He subsequently sent a picture of his nipples. Oh. They are razor sharp. <laughs> I heard that Colorado wow. is going to get down to like minus 30 something. I'm going to Colorado so tomorrow, actually. Oh, man. Someone going to read the super that. chat? God. No. no, we're going to talk about the weather for another three kidding. hours <laughs> until. I'm fine. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. Is it I'm, me or you, Katie? Who I can talk this? about the weather all fucking day. It's a pastime. Who, who is this? I'm going to take it because it's for me. Five pounds okay. from Vela Celine. Hashtag team estrogen. Hashtag team Chris Us. Thank you very much, Vela. I appreciate it. We're near that 25 where Ben has to deep for it a wee bit. 
Next. I know. I didn't have to deep throat it. I just have to eat it dry. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Do you know what currency uh, this five... is? I don't. I don't. Swiss francs. Swiss francs. Wow. Okay. Five Swiss francs from KKMe7. Jimmy is a tech god. Hashtag expensive equipment. <laughs> Just Jimmy, don't do not vote for Jimmy here. Jimmy's you know what a happens? cis you know, person. I I actually this... feel quite validated because you two waited so long to to get to calls, which and I pay per minute <laughs> on every call, and so there wasn't a single call tonight that didn't have a wait time of less than like forty minutes, which means I paid for all forty of those minutes four times. And then we had the one uh, person who waited like an hour and then dropped before the show ended. <laughs> Fucking terrible. But I think, Thank you. I think I this take is all a ruse. Jimmy. I think, I think KKME7 is Jimmy. And I think that's the reason it's Swiss is because that's where a secret offshore bank account is. So. I, when yeah, I want to yeah. do that, I just super chat as myself. You, the, the contract says you have to read it. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, you're not oh, wrong. Oh, never got a super chat from you. Very suspicious. Anyway, next. That's not true. Yes, you have. <laughs> Maybe. I only give them to the cis shows. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I'm offended. Katie, this is you. 499 from Stacy 1904 Thank you for the wonderful show today, Katie and Ben. No worries. Thank you for watching. Wishing you both a happy holiday. Hashtag team. <laughs> Please it says ben. Correctly. What? You can read, right? You can you can read, I right? Says, no, but... I did, I did pronounce it correctly. Please follow the contract. Mm. Read it in its entirety. Ben. Hashtag T A M E B N. Okay, uh... Katie, we're gonna work on sounding out words. We're gonna work on that. <laughs> I know it's tough. We can yeah. Mm -hmm. B B makes a buh, buh, eh, ben. But Except for when it doesn't, because English is nonsense. Katie, you have twice Ben's score. You can't, you can't say his you can't, name. You can't say my name one time. I can say your name one that time, face. but I prefer not to. Hashtag <laughs> team Ben. Drop bomb, Yay. beats not bombs. Was that so hard? It was so hard. It was pretty $30 hard. $30 from Kia Star no, 67. How do we as allies stop those in the U.S., usually Republican, from continuing to attempt to pass legislation that harms the transgender community? Hashtag team both? I can't. Well, uh, I wish you'd just pick one of us. Um, but anyway, how I'm do we... Such a as allies, uh, so it's difficult. I mean, the biggest thing is you can vote. Voting is very helpful. And um, continuing to not let people speak without opposition. Uh, like, a lot of people will say, well, why do you have to confront people all the time if you know you're not going to persuade them? Well, because if I don't, then they're going to speak unopposed, and then people are going to think, well, that's the only side that matters. So even if my words aren't immediately uh impactful uh the fact that they don't get to just go around and say whatever they want without consequences is at least a little bit yeah just keep calling them out keep turning up keep telling them to fuck off um and eventually they'll move on to someone else and then you can turn up for them and tell them to fuck off we we're never going to shake fascism forever i mean humans are shit so that's mm. what they do Five dollars from Johnny uh, Rapine. Hashtag Christmas Katie. Such a cute, fluffy kitty. Hashtag eat the wee to Ben. <laughs> wee to Ben. <laughs> wee to Ben. That can be the name of the Is show. Is that my next name week. now? <laughs> wee to Ben. <laughs> it's better than than my more recent name, uh, which apparently is Doctor Benus. So. <laughs> That's the nickname I can Okay, that's what I'm calling you from. Hashtag Dr. Venus is in chats. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> 9 dollars from Marco Hernandez. I forgot to vote hashtag Team Katie. Mayonnaise is horrible and should not be consumed by anybody. And uh, you're free to be wrong. That's you are free to be correct. You're free to be wrong. So that is your human right. Thank you very much, Marco. <laughs> you are the legend. 
Or is Carl Jobs They're also say, playing a guitar in that picture. Legend. Well, is he playing it or just having sex with it? Or... <laughs> it's hard to see. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Marco. <laughs> How does one have sex with a guitar safely? <laughs> safely? Well, you could, you well could, yeah, you don't want to get it pregnant. There's a lot of surface area to put a dildo on. Sorry, mine. Okay. I took safely a different direction. It's hilarious. Kate, Katie, is, it. Katie needs no, to have an interesting loud. instructional video about guitars and Weedabix lozenges. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready for this educational video. That was um, only on OnlyFans. Five pounds from Missy Prime. Here's another super chat. Thank you very much. Katie's rant about JK was well worth a fiver. <laughs> Thanks, Missy. That's uh, kind of you to say. Hashtag fuck JK Rowling. How close are we? Are we? Can you, you add nine and seventeen ben? together? I don't want to. Do you need I to went pee? to med school, so I don't have to do math. <laughs> I, I actually like just we, debunked that whole point the other day. I feel uh, like we theoretically could be close to done, but we're but it's us. So well, here's the like... other thing: is that I don't necessarily trust the numbers at the bottom of the screen because Jimmy's been fucking with them all all night. No, but I kept track Jimmy. of the real He's vote. the best producer we've ever had. Hashtag Team Katie, but really hashtag Team Poppy. Yay, but again, people are free Poppy. to be wrong. That's fine. She's asleep. That's fine. Oh, no, she's not. She's awake now. Hello. She's very sneaky. No Next. comment. Chats were coming in. I had to update the score. I only have two hands. <laughs> too too many five canadian dollars <laughs> what, what the page. fuck was that <laughs> are you wishing i would lose my hands <laughs> that's what it sounds like take points away from her she's a bully <laughs> katie's a bully take points away good lord <laughs> who does is a bully huh santa does exist i'll debate you on modern day debates jimmy canadian five i would never go on that page. channel <laughs> No. What is this foolishness? I come home to this. Team Ben doesn't have nearly enough votes. Well, that's what happens when Ben is against me because people just vote for the best person on the show. I don't know. Didn't I win the last time we were on a show together? So. <laughs> Five yeah, pounds from. Votes. From Vela Celine. Hashtag Team Ben. Hashtag Team Lego. Hashtag. Team Jimmy is wrong. Hashtag team drunk voting. I I mean, there's only only <laughs> one on there uh, is a valid team. So uh, which is drunk voting? Yeah. No, no, I believe Vala ben. is saying that Val that they are drunk. Yeah, I think they're saying yeah. that they're drunk, but also in their drunkenness, they're voting for me. So I don't know what that exactly. says about I, me. But you couldn't. Yeah. It's I don't care. It doesn't ben matter. Sober, like, Moving on. The only way you can yeah. possibly bring yourself to vote for Ben is if you had a few shots first. So you can keep mm, the vomit down. Sure. Five pounds from drop to beards. How do I deal with the bad head pictures from the Scottish Parliament protest? Has to seen Ben. Not quite sure what you mean about that. The bad head pictures. Do you mean the lady who flashed in Parliament, <laughs> or do you I mean so. the weird seance they had outside with like eight people, <laughs> or do you mean the protest they had had quite a lot of people turn up, like a few hundred people? Um. I don't know. I guess my way of dealing with it is like they lost and uh, get fucked. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Googled bad head and I did not get good results. That this is, <laughs> Why did you do this that? This is not <laughs> what they mean. Was it a load of Weetabix? <laughs> I didn't really do it. I just made it up. Safe search on. <laughs> Safe search. I'm not a coward. <laughs> Did I give this point? I can't remember. No. And I just add another one just for. I uh, mean, yes, yes, you did. I think I did <laughs> it. I've been catching up. No, no more super chats. Please. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Five dollars from Batgirl219. I came out as trans this year, and the show has been a lot of help. So thank you and happy holidays. Hashtag Team Thunderbear. Thank you. For your vote and happy holidays to you as well. I'm glad that the show has been helpful to you. 
Team KT, come on, let's go. We're only we're only four points ahead now. We should win this. Five dollars from Smart Alec Atheist. If Jimmy is a tech god, then that explains all of the technical difficulties <laughs> because God doesn't exist. <laughs> This is the best super chat of the whole night. <laughs> there has not been Hashtag one technical difficulty this entire show. Thank you very much. I mean, except for that one guy calling in on a torn piece of paper. Well, no, I think they're saying that, well, the technical difficulties didn't exist because it relates because God also doesn't exist. Oh, I took it the other direction. I don't know. Yeah, um, I thought it's the other way around. I I'm, I'm trying to general... give them the benefit that it, of the doubt here. Um, is it me? Yeah. Fifty yeah. sec from Puck Tholinder. Happy holidays. Hashtag Team Torbjorn. Hell yeah! These people are embracing the the Viking in the side chat. And I Puck appreciate it. Thollander Do you know what sounds SBK like the is? Swedish Kroner. Uh, it's Swedish Kroner. Yeah. Just tested. Uh, Puck Tholander sounds like the kind of name somebody uses to try to get you to accidentally say a swear word or a slur. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> but it looks like that. When I before you said it, I was like yeah, yeah. sounding it out of my head. Like this isn't some way to get Ben to say the N word, right? Like, uh, okay, we're good. <laughs> People do that. They've done that on streams of mine before to try and get yeah. me to say the N word. People with Is variations of the name man? Nicholas. Uh, okay. Anyway. Thanks. Six pounds from Malika Kunst. This is another one. <laughs> Be careful, Dr. Ben. Don't eat it too quickly. You might choke. <laughs> A problem Katie admittedly doesn't have. <laughs> Hashtag Team Katie. Thanks very much, Malika. <laughs> That that facial expression though afterwards. Nine ninety nine from Jimmy what Snow. Jimmy Snow is the greatest producer in all the world. His stories are extremely interesting and equally funny. He's a solid six look wise. Okay, well you're being <laughs> oh, a little that was hard really on nice yourself. of you to say, Ben. Thank you. That's so much. <laughs> to well, hear the those end, words. I could be nicer in that. I think you're mouth. at least a seven. Oh, that's really you know, nice. And I'm not delivery. just sucking up to you. We have a delivery app in the UK called Just Eat, and it's out. All the ratings are out of six for some reason, so you can be a six out of six on Just Eat. Oh, I was probably giving me, myself out of ten, maybe twenty. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> am I going to make a YouTube short clipped out where you don't even see the super <laughs> chat, and it's just Ben reading those exact words? I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. It's, I mean, I, I, I consented to this when I when I agreed to be on this show, that the, this content is yours and you can do what it, with there's it whatever a, you want. So I there's guess there's specific, no problem with that. There's a cis harassment Dangerous. clause in their contract. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is Katie, because I read Jimmy's. $5 from Quagma TV. Hashtag Team Katie. Excited for... Oh, I just picked myself in the eye. Hashtag... <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Excited for the Sunday show. Keep an ear out for me because I'm deaf calling in then. I'm Whisper. You are now Shark. What species are you? Okay. Um, I want to be... Oh, I've, I've got one of the... Sh you know that shark that lives like 500 years old and lives in the North Sea? Um... I want to be one of them because I think it's cool that there are sharks alive today that like were around in the Middle Ages or whatever in the Renaissance. I like would, that's cool. I would be a I'd be a hammerhead shark, but I I also I think Katie would actually be a basking shark that just goes by and it's just Weedabix that just like because they just like <laughs> keep their mouth open and just like eat whatever comes in and that's just it's like Katie just like a Pac Man shark with with Weedabix and then it's just. Greenland yeah, shark. Beautiful. That's what it is. That's what I was thinking of. But yeah, I'll, I'll be a basking shark. That means you could like deep throat another shark. <laughs> where is this? Where is this stream going? <laughs> uh, there's only one more vote and super chat. So if you want to turn it, Team Ben's only six away from turning this around. Seven away from turning it around. Get your votes in right now. Katie, Katie are but, you okay? Do you know what I love? Katie, are you okay? 
there's there's a bunch of people in the live chat trying to correct me for saying six, but none of them say ten. So they're all still like there's some distance away from they'll be like, oh no, he's at least a solid seven point two. And I'm like, wait, so in your head you're like, look, he's still far from great, but <laughs> Jimmy, it's because you wouldn't deep throat a shark. <laughs> I wouldn't, I've deep throated so much stuff on this channel. I straight up bit a wooden <laughs> butt plug on my last episode. I have a butt plug that I call a holiday tree that I made on my lathe and I put it in my mouth the last time I was on air. Like, I feel like I feel like Arden would be very jealous that she wasn't here for this episode. <laughs> I give the people what they want. <laughs> oh my god where is that thing i'm gonna bite it again i'm so, I'm so done with all of you <laughs> give me give me a <laughs> did we do we read we read I that found one, right? it. okay so this is the last one no. um five canadian from chaotic kitten what do you think about this comment your gender is based on how you have sex regardless of what you do for a transition and identity as hashtag team toe beans i'm guessing that's a, cat, a vote for the cat but I'm so this. I'm confused about the comment because it seems to be conflating gender and sexuality. R or am I missing something here? No. So um, I guess there is some people who talk about you know like top and bottom in sex is a yeah, dynamic that assumed. a lot of people have, and some people okay. might say, oh, maybe you're. And I think that's actually really bad. Um, like, I'm not saying terrible. you intended to be, but I think the idea, but I mean, you could say maybe top and bottom were genders if you really wanted to, but they aren't really because that's not really how people interact with the world. And you end up with this situation where you're like, women are the submissive ones and men are the dominant ones in sex. And that's kind of like the worst it's not kind even of true. type of patriarchy. It's not right. true, but it's also like what patriarchy tries to enforce. Um, I think that it's more than just not true. I think it's like actively bad. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that you're trying to be actively bad, but I think it's worth considering it from the angle of, you know, lots of people don't have this dynamic of top pot, top and bottom. And importantly, you're, whether you're a man or a woman or not, whether you, you know, how you see yourself in the world isn't dependent on how you have sex. Like some men, some women are tops and bottoms, some are neither. Like, yeah. I, I strongly disagree with this in the politest way that I can. I think it might even be more common to come in the opposite direction because I, every time I'm dating a guy, somebody thinks, doesn't realize like how impolite they're say, what they're saying is, but ask some version of like, so which one of you is more like the man and which one's more like mm -hmm. the woman every time. And it's what they, they like think they're being well-meaning and asking something that they're curious about. Cause they're just like, well, what other dynamic possibly could exist? Clearly that's yeah. how it has to be. Yeah, exactly. It's that kind of thing, but then like extrapolated to people's whole person. Yeah. It's not good. It's not good. IMO. Boy, what a, let's lighten this wow, back this up. Wow. This got to be a serious discussion goodness. compared to all yeah. of our, <laughs> yeah. We, it got of. real dark in here. It got real. Thank goodness for Stephanie to bring back in the butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. I don't know who this is. I'll do it. 4 99 from Stephanie, from Stephanie Helms. 10 for the wooden butt plug. Because we, we were oh, talking we're about on Jimmy's, scales. What you know, I think what Stephanie is saying is that she will give another $10 if you cut to Jimmy putting a butt plug in his mouth. <laughs> Alexa, turn on show lights. <laughs> He's going to do it. One moment, please. Uh, okay, oh, first no. of all, before I come on air, please keep in mind I had no plan to come on air. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, and uh, can you clip that part out? <laughs> come on, Stephanie, you owe us $10. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, goodbye. sis, get off our channel. Okay, bye, 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 sis. <laughs> <laughs> it was your invitation. Uh, he, also said he, he also said he was going to come on air, so I didn't. I maybe I took that the wrong way. 
but he didn't. You see um, it. <laughs> that's on me only fans. <laughs> I also have a JOI on OnlyFans, but it's uh, in the voice of Wes. <clears throat> See, I, I started, I started oh, OnlyFans as a joke once upon a time, uh, and it was literally just me uh, putting on exam gloves and snapping it in front of the mic. Thank you for laughing at that, Katie. I think Ben maybe doesn't know what a JOI is. I don't I'm know what JOI is. I just laughed at you. Wes. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I so... only learned what... Is this a sex thing? Because I only learned what a cream pie was this week. It's kind of a thing creators <laughs> do. It, there's nothing. They're not. It's not like weird, right? But it's a. Uh, it's a uh, where. So, so it, people on OnlyFans sell them a lot, and basically all it is is like they sit in front of a camera and they sort of. It stands for jerk off instructional. They they guide a person's masturbatory things, and I just think that it would be kind of funny to do one was. Yeah, right now, what are we gonna do? Go ahead. And <laughs> Why don't you go whip it out? Go on, pull it out for me. Go on. <laughs> I don't know. You broke Katie fun. again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, right, I'm not saying you should come right now, but like... <laughs> <laughs> right. No, not yet, though. You got to hold it back a bit. <laughs> I'm sorry, Wes. <laughs> oh, I think Wes would laugh. Wes, Wes despite being... Antagonistic is a good sport, usually. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Wait, Katie wait, already wait, got I to get up. Such and... a good combination. I just thought of a Matt Dillahunty. Have... Matt Dillahunty's jail. I, I... I would end with, no, no, no. You're done. <laughs> I was just going to say, don't tell Matt this, but maybe if we had Arden's side business slash real business but co but like with a commentating of wes that could be a good i'd pay for that oh my God. <laughs> how many more do we have i have to pee katie got to get up to go pee, go and pee, I, go I pee have not there is more. only two more okay, so ben. right now and both votes are for you but it's you can go if you need to go i'll stay for a couple more minutes then okay uh five, five pounds, pounds from... heads. i just want to know why you would make out a plug out of wood hashtag team ben well, I think wood's I, okay as long as it's like polished and like not going to splinter. Yeah, so mine it's isn't sealed in any way. Written on the bottom is literally "Do not put in body." Uh, I just wanted to make <laughs> a YouTube video last Christmas where I'm clearly creating a butt plug, but I called it a holiday tree. So I made a like a yeah. woodworking video called "How to Make a Wooden Holiday Tree on a Lathe." That's the whole joke. Yeah, because the problem is it's so porous. Well, no, like, I used a very hard it's an wood. Infection issue. I, I used a very it's hard still, wood and sanded it down to like issue. 600 grit. So it, it actually is probably pretty safe to put in you, but I still wouldn't. Still disclaimer. Do not put in body. It's on the bottom. Anyway, here you go. Here's your last one. All right. Shit, sorry. Says, where, I, I thought it would. It? It, I yeah. Sorry, I just sent the same one again. Here you go. Five pounds from Troptopedes. Uh, hey Jimmy is at least a nine out of hashtag Team Ben. <laughs> okay. Nine percent out of Ben. Ben ten. No. Am I? Am I a ten? That suggests what? You're the ten. Does that and suggest I'm a nine? that I'm a ten? Okay, this says I'm 90% as handsome as you, which I will take. There were also people arguing in the chat about <laughs> me being hotter than Palagia. Please don't ever, because Palagia is just uh, dreamy. Let's, I don't need that comparison. I, what I love about Palagia is he's obviously got a nice voice, and it's like a deep voice, and it's so deep that all of the apologists who he argues with always have to like make some comment that he like, alters his voice. Like, the, oh, he's obviously talking for a voice thing that lowers his voice. Like, what? You just feel like you just, whenever they say that, I just feel like you're intimidated by his voice for some reason. <laughs> like, yeah. It's so uh, embarrassing. We did get um, a clarification. A we got a clarification on that super chat that we were confused by. And they said, to clarify, the person said that I couldn't be non-binary because I have sex like a woman and I'm AFAB, basically oh, yeah, associating okay. with how you're still okay. using your genitals with your gender identity. I, I think, oh, I think okay. you, yeah. 
I think you can, if you're even, you know, a trans man might be uh, a bottom in sex or whatever and might not have had mm. genital surgery. I think that's, I don't, I think these just things are just disconnected. I think how mm. you have sex is one thing and how you live your life might be related, might not. It doesn't matter. You don't, ha don't feel boxed in by these things. If you want to do a sex in your own time, in your own room, that doesn't mean that it has to dictate how the world sees you. Like, nah. Do you want? Anyway, I think that's all the super chats. That is I think we've got more than enough points <coughs> for a Weetabix battle next time me and Ben are on together. That's yeah. right. Ben, you've got Let's to go to it. the England shop and buy some Weetabix. I will buy some Weetabix. I actually have a load I have some Weetabix. I have some. Is Wait, why do you already have enough? them? Because <laughs> uh, I found them at the store when I was buying celery juice for, for my celery juice cleanse. But you haven't tried for them yet, right? Video. No, I celery haven't. Juice. It's a sealed box. Okay, good. I, I feel like everyone would have felt very gypped if, if it wasn't your first time having it when we do it. No, it's a sealed box, but I had to buy it while I was there. And yes, I bought celery juice uh, for, a, for a juice cleanse that I did make a video about because I pander to the public. Are you um, coming to the Christmas show? Nasty. Am I? Uh, I'm going to be in Colorado. We'll, f we'll find out. All right. Yeah, come to the Christmas uh, I show. Think, I think I might be able to. If it's 9 p.m., I think I might be able to. Bring some punishments to I'll the Christmas you know. show. We'll we'll make up some games okay. and shit and do all that. I'm going to be at my parents' house, so I won't have my yeah, setup. I'll, 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 find a, I'll find a place to pop in from. We got another super chat. Oh. Okay, last one. Then I really go. have to I... pee. <laughs> go ahead. It's This one's not important for you. You can go. You can go pee. Okay. 9.99 from Marco Hernandez. I wasn't have intercourse with my base i just needed access to the high register <laughs> don't super chat drunk no actually do super chat drunk send all of your money drunk i think they wanted to say i want to have intercourse with my base i just needed access to the higher register maybe i don't know yeah well, what you should do is get a six string base with the high c string and then you can be like Bili -li i've got one of those it's over have there you? though so i'm not gonna get it did you yeah. start with bass or did you get bass? Start. I got bass called after? out for this the other like, the other show, didn't I? Everyone was, was it like, me if who you did play that? bass and you're a stereotype. No, it was someone who said it in chat. I was like, oh, if you right. play bass and you're a stereotype trans woman, and I was like, oh. I I I'm a guitarist, but I do have basses, and I've got a six string bass over there, and it's bright green, no, no, dark green, and it's really cool. Um, I started with bass, and I'm then I. It. Don't know if that was on that show or not, but what I then said was, and then I graduated to real guitar. Yeah, that's what fake bassists say. Anyway, thanks everyone for being on the show. Oh, are we gonna thanks wait for, for ben? the super chats. Are you no, gonna say goodbye ben. without Ben? Do we have to wait for Ben to do a wee? What, we waited what, for you. Like... Yeah, it was half an hour ago. Oh, he comes. Okay, speed wear Ben is back in action. Katie tried to end the Hello, show ben. without you, Ben. What? Wow, you <laughs> you must really hate me. Okay, I'm just you know that's fine. I do. I really that's hate fine. Ben. Thanks everyone for watching and tolerating Ben, who I really hate. Um, <laughs> I hope you have a good Christmas, and I think you should tune into the Sunday show, where on Christmas Day, if if you are in a situation where Christmas isn't your thing, or or you don't have family to hang out with, or like me, your Christmas is delayed, or Maybe you're having a great Christmas and you're like, fuck it, I'm going to make Christmas even better. Because the Sunday show with a whole selection of fucking dickheads from this channel is going to be hilarious. And uh, please do join and we'll see you then. But thanks for tuning into the show. Thanks for the super chats. Look forward to the Weetabix. We have good calls. Mate, fucking hell yes, Scotland and Spain. Good times for everyone, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye. I didn't get $10 for putting that thing in my mouth. Oh.